So today I just wait for the questions, right? Uh, yeah, just a question. <laughs> All right, can, 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 no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now so cloud ready. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So thank you for joining us today. So my name is uh, Muhammad Afni Aris, data marketing at CTEC. So uh, yeah, we are now uh, in the final session of the Lajah Ustawan Digital Sekarang 2020. So in this session, uh, you can ask anything from what we have learned uh, last week. But uh, before we start, can I need uh, your help? Can you all op uh, open your cam camera? I need to take a screenshot. <laughs> all right, so. Just a quick one, okay. Another half. One, two, three, all right. Okay. So, okay, guys. Uh, enjoy the session. So, I will pass the screen to Charles. Okay, guys. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Charles. And uh, if you need any help or any questions, do let me know. This is my first time doing it. Um, so shoot away. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but uh, yeah, if any questions, you let me know. If, if I can help you, I will help you. Yeah, so definitely let me... Uh, uh, have, 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 they, have they done this before? Yes. Have they done this before? I mean, the participants? Uh, no, this is the first time also. Doing All right. Okay. All right. Um, then let me set um, maybe some... Because this is not my first time, yeah. <laughs> if not, everybody will be confused. Um, if you have a specific problem, yeah, whether it's on mm, copywriting Facebook, or you want me to take at your sales funnel, or you want me to take a look at your uh, marketing funnel on the internet, I can help you do that. Uh, my background, uh, I know SEO, I know Facebook, uh, I know funnel, I know copywriting, um, TikTok. Mm, no, not so much. So I think if you just focus on the topic last week that I shared with you should be fine, yeah? Um, Instagram, mm, no, I don't use Instagram and I don't use TikTok, yeah? But those are good tools. But if you want me to take a look, I do have some theory experience. So when I say theory means uh, probably by studying a lot, by looking at my students, how they success, but I don't do it on my own. So I want to make it that very clear first, yeah? Because um, as a performance marketer, I like to do things on my own to see results rather than just learn theory things. So if I know, I'll answer you. If I don't know, I will tell you that I think, yeah, maybe that's how it's going to be. All right. So let's get started. Let's not waste time. Um, whoever wants to start, you are, I think, because the room is small, 
if you have a, you can unmute your mic, just talk to me. It's so much easier that way. Because it's only, what, 15 people in the room? Minus me, minus Safi. Yeah. So let's go. If not, it'll be very awkward. I wait at you, you wait at me. I look at you, you look at me. I mean, you can look at me, I can look at you, but even worse for me. So let's get started. Come. Anyone? Hi, Charles. Laili here. Hi. Okay. Um, I have a personality conflict. Okay, I'm a Malay, but then my page is in English. So, okay, when I want to target my market, okay, I'm I'm making um handmade, uh, smoking dresses for kids. Okay, so my target market would be mixed Malays and Chinese. So my copywriting, I would normally I would be doing it in English. So if I want to target the Malays, okay, so I have a little bit conflicts. Okay, do I do my copywriting in Malay or do I do in English? Okay, do my page will be in English or in Malay or is it both? So um, I'm having a bit of conflict because I don't know how do I want to place myself. Okay, that, that is my question because all this while I've been attending um, FB ads, uh, basically the, the, the facilitators, they are Malays. So they have a different way of looking at it and um, I'm, I think I have a lot of conflicts within me. How do I do about it? Okay, that's my question. All right, all right. Thanks, Laili. Um, now, um, quite simple to answer you, no problem. Um, do you target Malay speaking English or do you target Malay speaking Malay? <laughs> so that's, that's the thing that you need to okay. ask as well. The, um, probably it's Malays who speak Malay, but then they also understand English. So um, no. maybe the people around me, um, so I speak you, English with them. Okay, so I, I'm a bit confused about the market here. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's, you're confused because you don't know your market that well. Can I just be okay. direct with you? All uh, right. You need to be very direct with you. So for example, I give you a story so it's easy for you to understand. Uh, I trade in English, all right? And um, um, when I train in English, it doesn't mean that Malay cannot join or Chinese cannot join or you know Indian cannot join. Those who understand English, they will come for my training. Now, uh, please understand when I say this um, in a very context and content way. Yeah? My context is this, when I train, uh, because I'm expensive, people pay me a lot of money. So most of the time, listen very carefully, most of the time people speak English are the one who can just afford to pay me. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, I just wanna say this very clearly to you. Then I wanted to do Malay market because those who can speak Malay but can't speak English. Do you understand? Because to me, all well, the business, 80% are Malaysians, are Malays, and uh, most of them speak Malay. And I wanna target that market segment. Um, so that segment, I only speak in Malay. My copywriting in Malay, my whatever in Malay. So it's all about your customer. So it doesn't matter whether they are Malay or Chinese or Indian, you just need to understand what are they comfortable with. You cannot do both. If you want to do both, create two different things because then, then you don't confuse yourself. I'll give you one good example. Um, um, do you know the, the gold brand uh, Habib, Habib Jewels? Yeah. Yes. So who are they target market? I never actually look at it. Mm. I but think they have them. both. I think they have both. I mean, those people who are like Malays and also those people uh, that speak both Malays and English. Okay. So you don't worry about the language. Learn about how okay. they come from. Huh? All right. They go in because it's gold. So they can speak English, they can speak Indian, they can speak whatever they want. Huh. But the young people will not go to Habib. That's right. Because you say, oh, my mother might go there. My grandmother goes there. You know, I would be dead. I'd rather be dead rather than go to Habib. Same like uh, handbags, yeah? Uh, local handbags, yeah? Bonia. Nobody will buy it. The young people will never buy Bonia. So having said that, um, do you know Pandora? Uh, no. Pandora, it is a very chic, um, perceived to be high class jewelry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, not that high class, but it's actually, you know, for the young modern people. But it's the same owner. You understand? It's the same owner from Habib. Ah, uh, uh, okay. All so, right. 
if you are selling uh, don't mix english and malay don't okay. be target different target market because the copywriting for malay is very different from english i know that because i've experienced it you can't okay. just translate because it all depends on that and also it's not only the language it's over how you write your content for example if you're going to people who are um, the majority of people uh, they probably want you to be like speaking normal english i mean normal languages but if you're talking to a uh, target market that is a little bit high class i'm not sure how much is address but if you're targeting high class then you probably need to be very professional okay. does it make sense to you so it's about it your does. customer not about the language that uh, right. you should portray yourself okay all right Understand. so now if you ask me um in your facebook i will just add a little bit more yeah uh, right. should you do in facebook malay or english malay um so your facebook uh it's in english correct it's, so yeah. yes so this one a lot of people ask me also what if i want to have a different chairman like chinese market let's say malay market who can't speak english at well yeah um it's just a medium now you need to understand uh, I'm, let me give another example Chinese people doesn't mean that they can't speak English. It's just that they prefer to communicate in Mandarin. Correct. Same with Malay. But there are also a group of people who can't speak English but only speak in Mandarin. So you need to understand your target market very well. Then only you can decide what um, language you want to use. And I can guarantee you one thing: if you're targeting the Chinese market, the clothing of the dress will be completely different from a Malay market. Okay. understand so well, i can guarantee you up front yeah um you go to ikea just a concept uh, malay people like to buy big chairs like king uh, clothes i mean you know big huge you know they like to so we bring bling uh, mm-hmm. most chinese people don't like that uh, right. i'm sorry i'm not about indians but uh, i just take this too yeah uh, give you a good example so you need to know who's your target market then cater to them i think that's okay. what you should do Hmm. So for the page I should do two two different page one is for Malay and one the other for English is it Again who is the target market who do you want to target Okay maybe can I ask you a little bit more question who brings more money for you Malay market or English market or Chinese market um, or English speaking market n- Now is Malay then focus Malay lah Okay but then if my Malay is not good that's why that's the reason why I put it in English because my Malay is not good so I mean, um, they have a different way of writing for the Malays as compared yes. to you know the way. Uh, okay. All so right, if you're understand. not good, if you're not good in Malay, it doesn't matter lah. You find someone who's good at Malay. All right. It's understand. not about you, you know. It's nothing about you at all. It's just that, for example, I don't speak that well Malay, uh, but I hire a Malay copywriter to target Malay. Okay. Do you understand? So right. it's yes. not about mm-hmm. me. It's about your customer. Okay. Understand? Thank so you. So if you're making making a lot of money on Malay, go with Malay. Don't don't go to penetrate a different market and then confuse yourself, uh, and mm-hmm. then be difficult and then you know do so many things and then go deep. Once you're going deep, then only you go vertical. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Welcome. Anyone else? Any help? <clears throat> Hi, Charles. Hi. 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 Hi, nice Sunny Chiu. Mm. Okay, um, I my concern is on SEO, right? And mm. I have been trying to sort of get help on SEO, mm. uh, to rank my my website. And mm. uh, from my discussion with several uh agencies or uh, people who actually do SEO right now, maybe this can be uh, a reference for 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 other participants here as well. So they have actually given me very conflicting advice, you know. Um, like, for example, uh, one agency, uh, says that you know they only focus on on-page and off-page backlinks are no longer uh relevant in twenty twenty. Apparently, according to Google's latest algorithm change. Um, because from my understanding, both on-site and off-site uh optimization is very very important. So maybe you can shed some light on. That, uh, that. And secondly, um, uh, some agencies, for example, they they help you rank by paying uh, for for backlinks, ah, uh, specifically. So they would uh sort of engage uh websites that they know, and then they they pay them 
to, to write articles about you or things like that so that, you know, to create that backlink. But there are some that this guy actually, what he, they do is that they actually own like a few hundred websites. They, they own them and some are pretty big uh, in traffic apparently. And they would, what they do is they just publish on the sites that they own uh, about you. But my concern with that would be that the websites may not be relevant to me. For example, this website is actually a government portal or that website is a chef-related culinary kind of portal. And you know, if they write about my industry, which is bedding, it's very weird. And would that uh, be considered like a very not so good way of creating a backlink for the long run and will we get penalized by Google, you know, in the future. Mm. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Think about oh, this... ranking. One more, last one. Okay, um, okay. Does domain name affect your ranking? Like uh, some people say, you know, you go for the top level, you know, what, what if the domain name now that I own is not a top level, it's a, some call it a secondary, second level domain or something. What's the domain name? Uh, comfort.co.com co dot so comfort.co.com uh, well, uh, yeah it's, uh, in fact a lot of people are like huh I've not heard of this kind of domain before and I'm like okay yeah, oh. dot, dot .com. okay um, yeah. now uh, again uh, to answer you there are of course many people who do SEO differently but I like to say something and uh, it works very well for me in the last 10 years. When we learn SEO, we learn what Google wants. And if your competitor is ranking number one, we just follow them. So if they got backlinks, we follow backlinks. If they got no backlinks, we don't follow them. I mean, you follow what is ranking number one. Does it make perfect sense to you? So we don't care about what other people say because at the end of the day, it's data. Data that we can see from our own eyes. So if the website or the top 10 or top three have a lot of backlinks, then it works. So no matter what other people say, they don't agree for them because I'm so sorry to say that in life. We don't care because end of the day is what you see on the first page of Google. Now Google is Google, right? Nobody can doubt Google that, oh, this page got no backlinks, aha. Uh -huh. So I don't put, so I'm not here to talk bad about other competitors at all or other companies. I'm just teaching you that you make your own decision based on what you see on Google. Okay, so now let me ask you a simple question. Do you see .co.com on the first page of Google? Not yet. Go and do your research. Probably go and ask, Google it, do, you know? So if you see, then you know it can rank. If you cannot see, then you probably know that it can rank. Mm. You understand? So that's answer you. So the backlinks also answer you. Um, I think that's the gist of it. Um, so content, yeah, content wise. Um, you're talking about people taking your content, putting it in another website and get you a backlink. That's what you mentioned. Uh, you will not get traffic from those websites. You will never get traffic from those websites. You only will get a backlink from those websites. So if you get a backlink, for me, in my opinion, backlinks will help you grow because the more people talk about your business, the more people talk about your website, the better it becomes. Common sense, right? So having said that, yeah, quality backlinks are good. Now, what that company does, I know the company very well in Malaysia. Um, they have a huge network because they've been doing this for a very long time. Mm. Now, that's okay. Yeah? Um, I, I think for Malaysian market, you're talking about Malaysian, right? Yeah. Uh, for Malaysian market, I think it's quite uh, straightforward. Yeah. So go for it. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a concern at all because um, end of the day, um, your website should have good quality content on your website, not on other people's website. Uh, other people's website, you just need a link to your, to your, yeah, what do you call that? To your website. So, shouldn't be a problem, yeah? For your, for your business, I don't think it's difficult to rank on the first page of Google. Mm. Because this company, if he owns like few hundred uh, websites, and how the strategy that they do, if the method that they use to help you rank is, basically they would, utilize their websites uh, basically they'll write articles about you right so that to give you the bad name so okay 20 years down the road okay if they don't renew that website like that few hundred website does that mean i will lose all my backlinks yes 
And so there is a risk there, right? Yeah, there's always a risk. Um, or, or what they're doing is uh, borderline illegal, yeah. Mm. But it works. So what if uh, Google bans all their website one day? Absolutely, and yeah. Say, uh, so if that's the case, um, I will say this. Uh, go ahead for it. It's nothing wrong. It's, it's mm. going to give you a very instant boost. But at the same time, get more backlinks from other people. Mm. Does that make sense to you? Because you don't want to depend on one. Yeah. So you, you can get the instant boost to rank. And then at the same time, uh, because you need to understand this is chicken and egg. Huh? If your website is not on the first page, nobody will link to you. If your website is already on the first page, people want to link to you. Does that make sense? Mm. So you can get that instant boost to link yeah, on the first page, go to the first page quickly, and then people will start linking to you. So you get other links. So if this network gets whatever wipeout in the future, you still have a lot of other links in the future that will still sustain you. Yeah? All right. So from Google's perspective, they will they penalize me if I do this? No, they won't penalize you. Okay. Your site is too small for Google. <laughs> a lot of people like, overcomplicate things that, you know, oh, is, is this wrong? This, I mean, our yeah, sites are all too small. Some are say, oh, you know, look at my client. You know, uh, they went with the wrong agency and then, see, they, they got penalized by Google and then everything, they lost everything, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay. In what way do we get penalized by Google in the first place? You, you will not get penalized by Google. You will get... The, the, the company that does the backlink will get um, banned. So when they get banned or whatever reason, all the links are mm. drop. So when the links drop, you don't have backlinks anymore. So your, mm. your, 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 your ranking will drop because you don't have backlinks anymore. So that's why mm. I said, get an instant backlink, but don't stop there. Quickly build other backlinks in the future mm. so that in the end of the day, one year, two years, three years down the road, you have a lot of links to your site. Mm. Yeah, because nobody will link to you if you are not on the first page of Google. I think that's very, very common sense. Yeah. So mm. again, uh, my answer will be very controversial because I don't really care whether it's doing things right or doing things wrong. Yeah. Uh, in a way, the context, I'll be careful when I say that. It is more towards uh, ranking on the first page and sustaining it. So look at what people do. Because if, if, if anyone tells me that, well, you shouldn't buy links and all that, I think that's quite nonsense. Lah. All the top pages buy links because who will give you a link? I mean, if you know SEO, right? Who will give you a link? Nobody will give you a link. Mm. You pay me, I'll give you a link. Lah. All right. Is buying links considered uh, what black hat? No, there's no black or white or gray. That's just what works and what doesn't work. You know? So you go and take a look at first page, second page, okay. uh, all the competitors, uh, and uh, reverse engineer the links. I would say that. All right, so uh, I'll come back to you because I still need to answer some other question. But yeah. if you have time later, I will show you one software that I do it all the time. It's very easy. You just invest in the software and then you can do it on your own. Thanks, Charles. Right. I, will Thanks get, so uh, I will see all the questions and then I will see what need help. Sure, definitely. So You're most welcome. All right. Uh, hi, Charles. Can I share something? Because I'm really at the start of uh, the SEM and uh, I'm, I search for the keywords that's suitable for my company and the numbers come out a bit scary. Can I share a little bit uh, of the share the screen? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, oh, host oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. I, oh. I give the permission. Okay. Post disable you, is it? <laughs> All right. You can say no. I think we'll do this, yeah. Uh, every every person will take about, because we have three hours, we have 30 people, yeah, we take about 10 minutes. And then if any more doesn't want to continue, then I'll go back to the person who has questions. So to be fair for everyone, yeah. Or else later, um, yeah. If we can take turns, yeah, we take turns. That's it. All right. Wow. Okay, I actually looked through like the three um because I don't have like a lot of budget to do all the keywords that is possible. So I just chose like the three and try to make the best out of it. But I noticed like the most important keyword, which is baby food, their top of page bit is like six almost seven ringgit. And I was like thinking that would like kind of 
destroy? Why pipe the whole budget like very quickly, isn't it? Uh, or should I look at different keywords? Or okay, yeah, I need to get your terms correct, yeah, because I'm old school. Uh, old school means search engine marketing is uh, consists of uh, Google Ads and also SEO. Okay. So yeah. consists of two. Yeah. So I need to understand what we mean by oh, SEO. So you Google Ads. Ads. Google AdWords, lah, huh? Ah. Oh, sorry, Google Ads. They, they, they changed their terms few years back. So I have to adapt. Okay, so Google Ads. I'm looking at Google Ads. All right. Yes. Baby food, baby... F what is that? LED? Uh, baby led winning. So it's actually uh, like a philosophy to let the baby choose what they want to eat. And actually, a lot of people like to read about it, but um, very few will follow. But it's one of the ways you can actually get customers to buy baby food instead. Okay, okay. So what's the question? Also the competition is very low, 18. So, so I thought maybe can choose. Uh, don't, don't, don't look at all that. Yeah, because it's quite, quite nonsense. Oh. Yeah. Don't, right. don't. <laughs> These are all theories. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, okay. You tell me your question first. What's your question? What are the three keywords I should index for my company? Yeah, I should, uh, should, I say should buy the keywords um, to get the top of page rank, ranking. Okay, for baby food, even without doing any research, yeah, uh, you should be ranked on the first if you're paying for ads because the moment you pay for ads, you'll rank on the Google. Uh, oh, okay, okay. All right. No, but like we have to choose keywords, right, that we are buying so that when a customer types that word, that you'll Correct. be right at the... Correct. So the idea is this, yeah. I, I don't think you should do this, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you how I do it, yeah. So you need to find okay. categories of... Um, categories of um, topic that people are searching for. So for example, if uh, baby food is one, um, then it's one. So it's one category, do you understand? Baby LED winning is, uh, baby led winning is another category, oh. then it's two categories. And uh, six one baby food, I believe you can go into the first category, do you understand? Okay. So you, like a family of keywords, yeah? One family, two family, three family. So now you say that you don't have a budget, right? So you can start with two families. So one family are the baby food. Um, you will decide. Are you doing it on your own or are you engaging someone else? On my own. Okay. Okay. Um, on your own. Okay. Um, can I be very yes. direct with you? Yeah, uh, yes. yes, I think <laughs> that you will burn more money doing on your own. You better outsource it or learn from someone who knows how to do it. Because testing on ads uh, is going to burn a pocket hole on your money. Because by just okay, looking okay. at All right. words, um, it's not going to be... Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions, yeah, if you don't mind. You let me know how well you know. Um, do you know the difference between broad, phrase, and exact match? No. Okay, then make sure you don't do it. But, I, but uh, okay, don't do. Okay. Don't, don't, right. don't try because uh, you're gonna burn money. Yeah. Okay, I guess out of budgets are to engage people. Uh, okay, maybe you let you me know, know how much roughly. Your budget. Um, okay, I'm not an agency, but I know a lot of agency outside there. Yeah, they will probably charge about two thousand. Uh, 1,005, 3,000 on average, about 2,000 on average per month. So that's the agency fee. Mm -hmm. uh, another agency fee, they will take about 20 to 30% um, of your advertisement fee. So for example, you spend 5,000, they will take 1,000. Okay. okay, all right. May, may I know uh, why you chose Google Ads instead of Facebook Ads? I'm already doing Facebook ads, so I, I thought that I need to do Google ads as well. Are you doing well on Facebook ads? Um, it's okay, got inquiry and, uh, you know, but I thought that must do Google ads. Can I, I advise know. you? Can I advise you on this? Can I advise yeah, you on this? I, I, I get advice actually. Yeah, don't do Google ads unless you know what you're doing. Just put in more budget on Facebook ads. Scale it up. All right, okay, all right. So that means uh, what I plan to put on Google Ads, just put it on this book. Yeah, scale it up, scale it up, scale it up to <laughs> only, only when it comes to a point you know, where Facebook Ads slowly doesn't work for you anymore. 
So there's only two reasons okay. why it doesn't work. Maybe algorithm change, or maybe you have spent millions and then there's no more customers for you. Yeah. Uh, then you start using other platforms. Okay. Problem with a lot of business, yeah, they like to go everywhere, and then they they they, they try to be. Uh, I have to be here. I have to be there. I have to be here. If it works for you, just continue and print your money. When I say print your money. If you're putting one dollar, you're getting two dollars or one fifty or three ringgit in a return of investment. Then you put in more money. Just put it as much as you can, and just scale it. It doesn't have to be sexy. It doesn't have to be, you know. It just can be plain, simple, boring. You know, just go to Facebook. You know, add some budget, five minutes job, and then get the leads and then follow up the leads, get sales. That's that. So please do not do this unless you really know. And I really ask you the most basic question. Uh, answer. I mean, um, uh, things on Google. It's going to be very difficult. It's not that difficult. Okay. I'm saying, but it's a different ball game. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's That's just a different ball okay. game. Okay. All right. So please, right. Um, yeah, all the best. Okay. Yeah. yeah for the SEO, I plan to open a blog, so I think that should help. Um, yeah. Can I see your SEO keywords? Um. Sorry. Can I see your keywords for SEO? Do you have already done now? Ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, I think no. I. Okay, done. don't worry. Later, I will. If I have time, uh, I I answer all. I will show oh. you a, a software that uh, all of you can do it on your own. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Uh, yeah, right. some of you are asking about the software later because I'll compile all the questions and then I will summarize it. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Just just put all my more money on Facebook. Don't do new things. Uh, okay. I made that mistake all the time. I I mean I. I always I, thought I that we must spend just. Uh, it's one of those things that must spend on. Uh, it's good to know that I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're making money, stick with it. No matter how boring it is. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Mm. Thank you. Sure. Um. Anyone else wants to go? Any questions at all? Let me know, yeah. Mm. Um, Tejavan is saying need some help on searching for the keywords of our products. Sure, I will do that. I will give, I will share with you, yeah, some tips later, um, so that all of you can uh, one time share and learn together. Any other questions? Any other questions that you want to ask? <laughs> we have a hey, we have a lot of people here. Yeah, we have thirty-eight people here. Strange, yeah. No one's asking me. Uh, okay, Onka, what would be a decent budget to start with something like Facebook ads on a monthly basis? Uh, Onka, I get the question all the time. Yeah, so let me just rephrase that question to you. How much money do you want to make every month? Okay, change of um, the question will help you think yeah, as much as possible. But then you get to know, sure, but you need to give me a figure. Because if you don't know what's the cost to acquire one customer, you cannot scale up. And I get that all the time. So I want to guide all of you. Yeah? Don't ask the question where how much, or maybe ask me what's the minimum budget or how can I lower my cost of things. I think that's not important. As a businessman, uh, we want more sales. We don't want to lower our cost. Why want to lower our cost? We want more sales. If we can spend more money, the more money I spend to get more customer, I will spend more money. Who in the world will say that 
I want to lower my cost because I don't want to spend more money because I don't want more customers. All right. So now I'm going to teach you one thing. Yeah. Um, I run OB. OB. What's OB? I'm so sorry. Um, OB. My boss cat food business. They cut some brand. One pack size. One pack. Okay. Let me just ask you a very simple question. All of you, you think, yeah. Uh, what is your cost to acquire one customer? Do you all know or not? If you all know, put yes. If you do not know, then I'll teach you how to get to know that. Ahmad, 50,000, 10%. No, all those are theories. All these are people who teach you all nonsense here. Yeah? They will say things like you submit 1,000 emails, you get one uh, response. I think all those are nonsense. Yeah. I'll teach you how to get a cost uh, and you need to understand this very well. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of things I've said that is quite nonsense on the internet, yeah? Okay. Uh, Ling says, if we brick and mortar, I can count the rental and staff divided by number of transactions per month. Exactly. That's what you do. If you have a uh, staff, all right? Let's let's take out my calculator uh, in average. We are not talking about net profit. We are not talking about net net. We are just talking about the cost to acquire one customer on average. Yeah? So let's say lah, huh? let's say we talk normal business here. Yeah? Uh, I hire one salespeople, two thousand ringgit. All right. So these salespeople goes out, meet people, do phone call, whatever. Yeah. So on average, these salespeople, uh, I already have a database of all the corporates and whatever sort. Uh, he has to call maybe 30 calls a day. Yeah, just 30 calls to set appointment. That's it. Yeah. So at 30 calls per day, I'm going to put a calculator. You, you, you will see how you're going to calculate them. 30 calls a day, let's say times five, five days a week. Yeah, times four, four weeks a month. It is, uh, he can make about 30 times five times four. He can make 600 calls a month for 2,000 ringgit. Are you all learning? So that's very common. Say, ah, Charles, I know that. Correct. On the internet, it's the same thing. So you can make 600 calls. So 600 calls doesn't translate to sales. Correct or not? So let's say 600 calls, what he does is he makes appointment. Maybe on a monthly basis, he meets, I don't know. Let's say we take 50, 30 people. Because one day you can only meet one person on average. You know? So he got... 600, let me just write for you, yeah, so you understand, yeah? He can make 600 calls. And he can generate 30 uh, appointments. And from there, he generate three sales. All right, common sense, right? So I want to teach you common sense in business first before you go online, uh, because you need to understand business first, yeah? So 600 calls, 30 appointments, three sales, now, what is the cost uh, if I'm hiring that guy at 2,000 ringgit? What is my cost to acquire one customer? Wow, so many questions suddenly. I'll read, I'll read back, but you answer me first. Oops, I, I, I only sent to one person, sorry. Eh? I'm going to put all in everywhere. 600 calls. 30 appointments, three sales. What is my cost to acquire one customer if I'm paying him 2,000 ringgit a month? Now, any one of you do not know how to get 667 ringgit? Any one of you don't know how did I get 667 ringgit to get a cost to a customer? So now, assuming that everything is smooth and I want 10 customer. So if I want 10 customer, one customer, I need to pay 667. If I want 10 customers, I just pay 6,000, uh, 7,000 ringgit. So that is my benchmark when I do marketing. If I want 100 customers, if I can cope with 100 customers, then I invest um, 600,000, uh, sorry, 60,000. Yeah, if I want 1,000, I invest 600,000. So the number just goes up as you want. So it's nothing about percentage or scaling or things like that. You just need to know you acquire one customer. Now, if you don't know that, figure out. Run ads, run marketing. You know, go and figure out and you get an average. 
ask other people what's your cost to find one customer. That's the most basic important thing when you go on the internet. And once you have that, you have no problem paying money. You know what's my problem? Cannot cope with business. That's a beautiful problem to have. Cannot cope because I got no stuff to handle my customers. Um, I get a budget problem with Facebook. Yeah, like 30,000, 50,000 a day. Uh, the credit card gets blocked because you never pay. And if it's Saturday, Sunday, you cannot go to the bank um, to pay and um, they will really slow. So you want a higher credit limit and you can't get that because the government, I mean, the bank doesn't want to give you a higher credit limit. Yeah. So that's my good problem, right? So because the basic fundamental are understood. As long as I want one customer, I need to spend X amount. If I want 10, I spend 10 amount. If I want 100, I spend 100 amount. And that's the other factor. So in marketing, that's the most fundamental. So if you all do not know this, um, ask around, but be careful who you ask here yeah, because you'll get different answers. Ask someone who has done the business. I think that's the best place. Lah. Or probably your competitor, or probably, you know, um, or you can reverse engineer people also. Technically, you can. Yeah? So I'll teach you this. Now, having said that, whether I hire a salesman, or whether I go to Facebook ads, or whether I go to Google ads, or whether I use TikTok ads, or whatever I use, whatever ads, it's the same thing. Lah. When I get ads, I get leads. When I get leads, I get appointment. When I get appointment, I get sales. So the funnel of your sales must be amazingly good. Now, once you have done that, then up to you how much you want to put money. So now the only thing that every day you need to take a look at, hey, this is above average. Hey, this is below average. Good. Above average, uh, do I need to wait for a while? If I run Facebook ads, Google ads. If it's not good, then, you know, should I do better? Or can I do better? Yeah, can I engage someone else to do better? So that is how, once you have that benchmark, you know, the way of you thinking business is very different already. Because now you get to understand that, hey, cool, I can get more money. So then you ask me, what if I'm selling, a, okay, like just now, uh, Lily. What if I'm selling a, a baju and I make, I'm just saying a Lily, I'm not saying you. Uh, what if my profit margin is only 10 ringgit? Yeah, 10 ringgit. And, uh, and uh, my cost to acquire one customer is 30 ringgit. Okay, so I have a few answers for you. If your business only makes small money, then you probably want to change your business. Okay, that's a very nonsense answer, right? But it's, think about it. If you can sell anything and make money, why you want to focus on things that makes less money unless you uh, really want that product? Because as a businessman, um, we want profit. Yeah, I'll be very direct with you. We, we don't care what we sell. As long as we make money, we sell. Now, the second thing is this. If you don't want to change your business model, what you can do, it is uh, make sure that the when you get one customer, listen very carefully, yeah? if you get one customer, make sure that you follow up for the person to buy two, three, four, five. We call it a lifetime value of a customer. So now your cost is always not to sell. Listen to me all carefully. Yeah? 41 of you here in the room. Your job is never to sell on the internet. Your job is to get the customer out from Facebook out from Google, put it in your platform, and then market to them again and again and again and again and again, which Malaysian business never do and don't do, which is very weird one. Even I don't do that. You understand? I have so many customers. I have probably 3,000 students, but I never focus on them, which is not really real on them. But so hard to acquire because we business people, we less like to get new customers all the time, but we never take care of our old customer. And I speak from my heart because in 2021 i'm going to go back to the fundamental take care of your customer because they are the one that will give you the most business you understand live value webinar uh, affiliate marketing so then you understand that the cost to acquire customer can be high but then they can recommend you more people affiliate marketing or they can buy from you more so technically it's still okay to run ads if your product is small do you understand something all right so i'm going to go back into some questions yeah uh, all right, I'm going to read some questions. Uh, okay, I mean, I want to help my friend promote his product, Powder Soup. He's been doing few ads, okay, 10 to 20 in a day. And wants a video ad, get high engagement, but no leads. Um, okay, I mean, I'm going to say direct to you. If you run Facebook ads for engagement, Facebook will say, I want more ads for engagement. You understand? So you get more engagement because when you choose Facebook ads, there are three, right? The main thing, uh, engagement, awareness, and then uh, uh, visit to sites, I believe so. And then another one is conversion, if I'm not mistaken. Eh? 
So if you want engagement, you get engagement because Facebook say, okay, I'll give you engagement. If you want leads, you choose leads generation. If you want conversion, you want sales, you choose sales. Lah. But that's a problem because most people don't know these three basic things. Yeah, and then they simply want sales. Now you cannot get sales when people don't know you. Listen to me very carefully. You cannot get sales when people don't know you. And how to get people to know you? So you are right. You are use video ads first because video ads is the cheapest way to create awareness. So run video ads, uh, write this down, and then do remarketing to these people who watch your ads because you can target them five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Then target them and do conversion sales or do lead sales. You understand? That's how you do sales. A very basic video ads and then retarget them to um, tell Facebook, hey, I want to target people who watch five seconds and more. That's it. I want people to watch uh, my video for the fullest. That's it. And that's where, you know, you, you, you do Facebook properly. Most people run one ad and then don't get sales and then they blame Facebook. Don't blame Facebook, it's blame you. Yeah, because you don't know how to use Facebook well. Because people spend million, billions on Facebook. You understand? So Facebook is one of the best platforms in the whole wide world, I believe. Yeah, don't listen to a lot of people who say it's nonsense, cannot work anymore, too saturated. Don't worry. Yeah? Uh, it's unbelievable how much sales you can get on Facebook if you just know how to use Facebook. Yeah? So ads, remarket, follow up, sales, build a lookalike audience. You know, people will buy from you, tell Facebook, hey, I want lookalike audience, 5, 10, 15, 20%. Uh, I want more of this, I want more of this. Facebook, yes, boss, I will get you more of this. You tell me what to do. After you really, really optimize that, finally use a CBO. I just did a Facebook course yeah, in 10 minutes. <laughs> did a CBO, uh, budget optimization, uh, and Facebook will say, yes, I'll do that for you, boss. Yeah, most people don't know how to do Facebook, straight away go to CBO, and then Facebook. You see, you need to educate Facebook first to get what you want. And be careful, like for those of you also, don't engage someone who just know how to do Facebook. Engage someone who does Facebook on a particular niche. You understand, like Ling, if you want to target uh, outsider, don't just target people who are doing Facebook like me. I don't, know, I don't have a clue of baby, even though I know Facebook. You understand? Even though I know Facebook, I don't have a clue about baby product. Uh, so you want to find a guy who does Facebook ads and focus on baby product, or at least commercial product. Because if you ask me about training, sure. You know? But the concept is the same. The concept is the same. Because uh, if a person who focus on one particular niche, his pixel will be so valuable. Facebook will say, oh, you want this? Google also will say that, oh, you want this kind of people? Like, all right, I'll give you more of these people. I will target you more of these people. Because all of us here, 40 of us here, I guarantee you, some of you like to click like one, but never buy one. Some of you like to buy, but don't like to click like one. You know, Facebook will know everything about us. So that's how you do it. Yeah? All right? So, I mean, I hope I answer you. It's not about the targeting. Targeting is, um, to me, uh, Facebook is so smart today. Even though you're wrong, targeting Facebook will know what to do. Yeah. It just takes a longer time to educate, but then it's okay. All right. Um, okay, Onka says, uh, what if you know the cost? But if you're a newbie like me, what's a good starting point? Um, on average, yeah, um, to me, if, if it's a lead gen, lead gen on average, yeah, based on my experience, yeah, on being a lot of my students, a click will cost about lead gen. Yeah, a click will cost about one ringgit to three ringgit. So on average, depending on your offer, so there's a lot of factors, uh, copywriting, your product, your service, whether you're branding, uh, whether you're selling something that uh, people want, yeah, all these things, uh, you will probably get about one to 3%. That's quite normal average. So then you work backwards, uh, one to 3%, that's the standard rate. Uh. Anything lower than that is bad, anything higher than that is definitely good. So one to 3% is your standard. So you use that on card as a benchmark. All right. Uh, I mean, so, so I choose message lead so they can message us. Ah, choose both. Huh? Let's try and see. I use all the time. I use click to website. I use uh, lead. Uh, some businesses are good at certain things. Some businesses are good at certain things. No one can tell you what is good unless you do your own. So you need to burn money, guys. You all need to have this mentality. Yeah? When you hire a salesman, you cannot say, I, you must, you must, you must. Huh? Uh, get me sales. If not, I fire you. Um, that's a risk. Same with Facebook, same with Google Ads. You will still need to burn. But you're not burning for the sake of burn money. You are burning to get data. You're you are teaching uh, Facebook. You're teaching Google. You're teaching 
uh, all these people, hey, what kind of customers you want? What kind of customers you don't want? Your targeting works what good, what is not good. So that's why this now, in a baby, I said to put three categories. Uh, why I do that? Because when I put three categories in Google Ads, I will see which category is the one that's profitable and which one is not profitable. The one that's profitable, I continue, I scale up. The one that's not profitable, I stop. Yeah? So that's why I put three or four, or 10 categories to test things. Same like Facebook ads. Uh, I, I don't do one ad you know, and do targeting. I do 10 ads. I don't really care about uh, image and uh, copywriting. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. I care a lot about copywriting and image, but that is the primary thing. When I do ads, the copywriting and image never change. All the same, and I do 10 targeting. And I see which one is works, I continue. Which one doesn't work, I off. I do not test my copywriting and image anymore because that should be perfect already before you even run ads. Um, a lot of people like to say that test everything. I say that's nonsense. Yeah? Uh, there's a lot of things you can before test yeah? because you don't have a lot of budget. Please listen to um, common sense. If you test everything, your budget will be what? 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 burn. Uh, there are things that you test like interest, like group, but never test your images and your graphic already because you should know by now what works and don't work. If you don't know, I think I refer to my notes. Uh, I give you ads library, other people are spending money. If they work for them, why does it work for you? You must understand this, yeah? So that shouldn't be tested at all. You should know copywriting very well at the back of your head. And you should know what is so good about your product and what's the benefit that you should give. Follow my notes. Don't talk about features at all. Features tell, benefit sells, yeah? Uh, all right, Amila. Based on my experience, is there any business that doesn't work on Google Ads? Oh, um, let me just explain to you all something here. Yeah? Even if I open up my ads and you open up your ads and I teach you 100% 100 the same thing, 100% copywriting is the same, 100% image is the same, 100% targeting is the same, I guarantee you, you and I will get different results even though you follow me 100% exactly the same. So you need to understand why, yeah? Um, two things, lah. Um, number one, it's your pixel. Like I said, if your pixel is trained, you'll get better results. If you run Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, uh, you're training Google, Facebook, to get your customers. So it's getting better and better and better compared to a new person who just started. So a lot of people tend to give up when they first started because they think it doesn't work. It's not that, yeah? It's just that, like I said, you need to educate. They're getting smarter. Facebook, Google is getting smarter, but at the same time, um, you need to test, yeah? So to answer you, is there any business that doesn't work? Uh, I don't know. But what I like to know is this. Um, how much money I put in is how much money I get back to acquire one customer. If it's too much or too high compared to, let's say, let's say I'm doing training, right? Yeah, I'll give you my example. Uh -huh. It's easy. I'm doing training. So my cost to, to get one customer in training, yeah, training, yeah? Uh, my training is about 4,000 on average, yeah? To get one customer, I will spend maximum 10%. That's it. So that will give you a good understanding of uh, business, yeah? Um, 10% and what I'll do is 400 ringgit. Lah. If anything more than 400 ringgit, I will not do it. So that's it, yeah? So education industry is something that I focus on uh, because of the high profit margin. For example, a degree can be 30,000, 28,000, yeah. A diploma can be 15,000, yeah. So to run Facebook ads or Google ads for uh, education is very, very lucrative. But I do understand, what if I'm selling products? What if I'm selling a coffee that is telling it? Then that's where you don't do lead gen, you do awareness campaign. Awareness campaign, get people to know, give them an irresistible deal, for example, uh, I'm giving out uh, 1,000 coffees for free. Let's say you're selling coffee, yeah? I will do that. I will give out 1,000 coffees for free. All you can do is uh, come to my shop or come and claim for me. That's what a lot of people do. Yeah. So then you say, wow, if I give like that, I lose money, yeah? No, don't, don't think of losing money. Think of it that what's your cost to acquire one customer? You have that mindset, uh, it's easy. Because a lot of people try to sell on the internet and they fail. And that's why they say it doesn't work. But once you acquire one customer, just imagine, that's your sales funnel. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about sales funnel. Just imagine how many times you can sell again and again and again to the person 
or ask the person to introduce another person or ask the person to be your affiliate so that one person can generate a lot more money for you. Uh, are you understanding me? Because you need to know that uh, to get one customer, this is my cost, that's it. But one customer, I can make a lot more money. It's like Coke, it's like Kentucky, KFC. Yeah, they spend millions every single month. Yeah, on every one. But you go to KFC, you order 15 ringgit only. Abang nak ayam goreng tiga, ayam goreng dua. Saya pun nak, saya nak Coke juga. ayam goreng. Boleh? I'm just teasing, yeah. Okay, what I was saying. Million dollars on ads, right? And we go to KFC, we spend 15 ringgit. Correct or not? So if you cut, cut it like that, of course we lose money lah. But the lifetime, yeah, the, the calculation, every month we eat one time 15 ringgit. Uh, 1,000 people eat, you know, it's a small, yeah. So you need to understand that it's not about Facebook doesn't work or Google doesn't work, yeah. Uh, it's, if you get a customer already, what do you do with that? Do you follow up? Do you add value? Uh, do you go live today? There's no, there's no way, I mean, Doing business today is so much easier compared to last time. A lot of people said, no, Facebook today is hard to do. Nonsense, yeah? Mm, today we have live. You have live, yeah? You go live, you can reach out. It's just like broadcasting on television. You spend 1,500 ringgit, whatever, you know, to get people to listen to you. That's, that's, that's priceless, yeah? So it depends on your business model, again, yeah? Uh, if, to me, very simple. If your product is low profit margin, then you go mass market, then you go awareness campaign. If your product is higher margin, then you go on a lead gen, yeah? I think that's the most basic fundamental I can teach you in a very general uh, statement. Lah. Because no point you want to do lead gen for the low profit margin product. Do you understand something? It doesn't work like that. It's like you want to eat Kentucky and then you want know, to collect the lead and then the person say, hello, do you want to eat my Kentucky today? Uh, no, I think it doesn't work at all that way. So you need to understand your business model and you need to understand how you do your business on the internet. All right, is there any other questions? Hello, Charles, can I try? Sure. Hi. Okay. Uh, my name is Yong Ming Kong. So I have, uh, okay, my company, uh, Pacific Progress Trading, is in the business of uh, lorry tire importation and distribution in Malaysia. So the company uh, right now is in the stage of uh, setting up a company website. And the objective of the websites are uh, firstly, company presence, secondly, the product and services provided for the interested readers where they are currently non customers and also the current customers. So the third objective is that to get the sales lead for future following up and the sales development. Number fourth is a customer online inquiry and ordering of products. Number fifth is a payment gateway. And number six is a future CRM program development such as a new app development. So my question uh, now is on the choice of, uh, I learn, a, I mean, I, I hear some of this, uh, like for example, the software platform, WordPress, open card or others uh, for the objective i just mentioned just now uh, are there any difference uh, in terms of the choice of the future uh, the software platform okay uh, i'm so sorry uh, because half of the thing you're breaking up man you're gore right sorry you are, your name, name is gore uh, my name is young young mr young. young i only heard gore sorry okay, okay. what are you selling this now uh, ah, yeah. lorry tires yes lorry tires you are supplying or you are selling one-to-one -one? Uh, supplying, supplying. Okay. So you supply in uh, two shops? Your target market is a shop? Uh, uh, actually, my target market is uh, to segment. Uh, there are many segments. I just take, for example, uh, one segment for discussion is uh, this uh, transportation companies. Correct. So it's B2B, right? I will assume. Uh, it's a B2B, yes. It's B2B. Okay, got it. Uh, so because since, company... it's, since it's not in the mass market, so uh, earlier on, we we did not uh, really think that uh, the the digital presence of the company is uh, such important, but <laughs> it's different now. <laughs> okay, so again, um, the most fundamental thing that I advise all companies is who's your target market. 
uh, if you are targeting just B2B, do it one first. If you are targeting B2C, uh, I mean, sorry, your business to consumer, then you focus on your consumer. Don't do both because you'll fail. Simply because you're a startup, you're setting up, uh, do one thing at a time. Yeah, a lot of people, even me, um, I, I did this mistake um, three years ago, two years ago, three years now, two, three, three, two years. Yeah? Uh, I was doing very well in business. Yeah? One of the biggest training provider in the whole Malaysia, doing very well. You know what I did? Uh, after that, I said, wow, a lot of people want me to do uh, what uh, agency. Yeah? So I opened an agency company. Wow, a lot of people want to do e-commerce. Uh, I do e-commerce. Every single business I failed except my training simply because I did not hire the right people and I did not, um, uh, how do I say this, uh, focus. It's one person together with my partner trying to handle three, four company because we think we are big. No, I think that's a mistake that I did as a startup. Yeah, please don't do that unless you have the budget to hire another CEO and handle that. So if let's say you don't have the budget or you don't want to put a budget in, then B2B, correct? Supply, because I don't think, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking... Nobody will buy a, a tire, yeah? not many people now, uh, will buy a tire online. And uh, because they don't want to fix. I'd rather go to a mechanic and uh, buy a tire. I know some people, they go to Shopee, they go to Lazada, they buy a cheaper tire, uh, and then they bring the tire to the mechanic and then uh, the mechanic will fix for them. But how many people are like that? You need to understand this. There are only very few segments are like that. I think people would rather go to buy uh, a mechanic. So I don't think your business will be disrupted in the long term. Now, having said that, um, your business is quite easy for me to consult because I have another customer doing this also. Um, he's doing very well and uh, he focuses on few things. Lah, because your industry, no many competitor. You understand? So, you can target SEO, um, tire manufacturer, tire supplier, KL, Klang, Malaysia, uh, whatever states you want. And that's what people do. You don't have to have a e-shopping card. I think that's a waste of time for now. Uh, because when business contact you, they will want an email. They want, uh, I mean, they don't look at tires, right? They are not end users. They know exactly what they want. So technically, there's no point having a shopping cart and put all the tires. If I ask uh, Shia, I guarantee you, she doesn't know the difference between uh, one tire to another. All tires looks the same to her. I'm sorry, I just put you on the spot. <laughs> you said, so you need to understand your target market. So if a, if a business who want to buy from you, they probably don't really want to do the tire, they look at the specs, they already know. So PDF is a good place. So I would say that uh, if you want me to help you, if you're asking me, SEO, and uh, maybe you can do Facebook ads and Google ads. Yeah, both probably work, probably will not work. I wouldn't know, yeah, because um, um, the traditional way of, um, because these are industries that it's already been existing for a long time. You understand? Um, you are not, it's not an end user customer. You, you, you probably need to know the head or the people, uh, email marketing, I would guess, to target, because I'm sure so you know all the mechanics, you know all the suppliers uh, in, your, in your category. So there's not like many people who wants to buy and sell tires. It's not a, a, a business that people will just go in, yeah? Um, like chocolate or cookies or, you know, those kind of business. So. Try it. I wouldn't say no, but SEO is definitely the first thing you should do. Lah. It's a bit long term, but um, because of the competition is less, you should be ranking easily within three to six months on the first page of Google. In terms of the, the software, uh, what do you call it? The choice, just now we mentioned, uh, just I mentioned the WordPress or the other open card or there are probably there are some others. Okay. Uh, are there no. specific one uh, more relevant to the, the website setting up? Because I think my company still like to, to set up a website then. Okay, I uh, use WordPress because okay, it's uh, SEO friendly. WordPress, yeah. It's SEO friendly, it's easy to modify uh, and uh, easy to learn also. Yeah, so these are the things. Open card is good if you're doing uh, shopping, I mean, online shopping, but why? I mean, I don't understand why people want to have the online mall now. There's Facebook mall, there's uh, Shopee, there's Lazada, there is. Uh, there's so many e-commerce platform in the world, in Malaysia, that you just need to pay them, I don't know, 200 to 500 to 1,000 ringgit, and then you get it set up within a day or two days. So why anyone wants to open a shopping cart on their own uh, blows my mind. Yeah, I think as a marketer, no, as a business owner, all of us should focus on sales. 
chasing the sales rather than setting up the technical things. But to answer you, uh, Yong, uh, WordPress will be very good for SEO and also in the future if you want to build your e-commerce site. But I'm, I, I, think, I, I think I always set my boundaries by advising you um, not to do that, yeah? So I, I do apologize for that. You didn't ask that, so I should answer you that. Um, yeah, but WordPress is good. All right. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, Zira uh, is asking, uh, there's no off topic, it doesn't matter, just ask anything. Yeah? Do you think paying for social media influencers is a good idea to create brand awareness? Um, no, I am an anti-influencer. I have a very strong opinion on influencer because I don't like them. I think they are cheap. Uh, why? <laughs> oh, I'm going to touch a lot of feathers today. Yeah? It's recorded so well. I hope I don't go viral on the internet. Now, um, influencers to me, you need to understand. Yeah? Um, what is an influencer? That means, can they influence people to buy? Let's go into the basic things here. Yeah? If you're talking about, you know, they have a lot of followers uh, and they do a shout out and uh, people respond to them, fine. Then I will look at not their followers, but I will look at their engagement. You understand what I'm saying? So if that's what you're looking at, that's good. But if they just do a shout out and nobody listens to them, you probably get brand awareness, yeah? Uh, which is good. And I'll give you a point, right? Do you all know Dato Li Chong Wei? Anyone doesn't know who is Dato Li Chong Wei? Can I ask you what is he famous for? Badminton. Badminton? Do you know he sells pain? Uh, oh, Do you know yeah. he sells rice? So, you see that he wants to? Yeah. Yeah, so you all don't know, but people pay him influence. He's, he's a paid man. I mean, he gets paid. I, if I get paid, I also influence anything. But am I an influencer? No. Um, so if you want influencers, if you want, I'd rather go for KOL. KOL are key opinion leaders. That means when they speak, people listen to them. Like probably me. I think I speak a little bit on the internet, people listen to me. But if you ask me on food, no. Even though I like to eat food. Yeah, because I'm not an expert in that field. So if you ask me influencer, should influence people? Yes, it's a very good thing. But the problem is everyone go and buy TikTok or go and buy you know, Shopee, you know, two ringgit uh, or 1,000 followers, they get a million. And I see a lot of business, they judge because of numbers of followers, which is totally, completely nonsense and bullshit. The only thing that I will judge is called a conversion because I'm a performance marketer. Uh, I am very, I mean, I don't really care. Okay, listen to me. Eh? I don't really care how many likes you get. I don't really care uh, how many you know, comments you get. To me, I'm a businessman. And on the day, I want to make money. I don't care whether people talk good or talk bad or you know, talk about me. I just want money. And I'll be very direct with you because a lot of people don't speak like me. Yeah? They said, oh, you need to, the engagement is important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I've run ads uh, on new pages and I make money compared to people who have a million followers. And that doesn't make any uh, impact. You know, I can give you one example, Lazada. Do you know how many Lazada fans they have on the Facebook page? Can I share my screen? Because I, I show you, yeah? Let me set up my screen now, I'll show you my screen. Lazada, guess how many people they have? How many followers they have on the Facebook page? Anyone? Lazada. Malaysian Lazada, how many? 30 million? Yeah, 30 million. 30 million. There's a whole population of Malaysia, yeah. I mean, amazing, right? 30 million population, I mean, uh, million. But I'll, I'll share my screen, I'll just give me a minute. Look at their posts, yeah. When they post anything on the internet, uh, do they even get attraction? So if you ask me why 30 million, I also don't understand, yeah. I cannot understand this. But I want to show you this. It's not about the numbers. So to me, um, if anyone comes and say that, Charles, uh, I'm an influencer, come and pay me money. Sure, I will pay you money if you can help me convert sales. And I'll pay you upfront first. And you just show me what you have done. Like I know Google, I know ads, I know Facebook can convert sales. Correct or not? Because at the end of the day, that's what I do. 
Yeah, but if you just post on your Facebook, post on your Facebook, yeah, and you have 30 million, uh, let me just go down a little bit so that, you know, it's fair to get a two days, three days um, article. You all can see my screen, right? Hold on, yeah, let me just make sure that I can see you also. All right, so you can see like, um, I'll just take one randomly. Uh, this is 30 million, yeah? So you see the ratio of 30 million um, and the average get about 210, 12, yeah? And that's quite sad, isn't it? Uh, and then if I, if I go down somehow, yeah? Um, you know, 15 comments, you actually go through the comments, it's mostly people um, renting, yeah? Uh, renting, yeah? Um, like, barang tak sampai, product tak sampai, product bad. They use this as a platform to, to show. So I was wonder why um, a 30 million um, Facebook page and they don't utilize it. So it's quite interesting, right? To, to think about it. So if you ask me if Inosa is good, yes, it's definitely good if they can show you conversion. So if they're starting out, fine, yeah, no problem. Uh, but if, if they say that, hey, I have this data, yeah, I have this data. Uh, I'm not talking about conversion means sales. I'm talking about conversion means like, will I get, okay, let's say I spent 10,000 ringgit, yeah? It's all about end of the day, uh, cost to acquire one customer. I only think of that, yeah? So let's say I pay 1,000 ringgit. Can I get good quality leads, let's say 30 to 50? So if you ask me like that, if it's good, yeah, then I calculate, oh, you can get 10 leads, and that means one quality lead is 100, is it? Okay, good. Whether I can close a sale or not, that's my problem, huh? not influencers. I think you all need to understand this. Whether your product people buy, it's your problem as a business owner. Because people do ads, as long as a good quality, as long as a hit all the quality, you can convert or you can convert, it's your problem. You need to understand that yeah? because business owner, media buyers and uh, agencies are three different components. You understand? The agency will tell you, I give you leads, you cannot close. You suck. Business owner will say, your leads are bad, I cannot close, you suck. You need to define this very well. What is a qualified lead? For example, when I do business for myself, yeah, myself, yeah, I tell my staff, if you give me this lead, if I can, you cannot close or you cannot close, then it's our problem. But if the lead is unqualified, you decide what's qualification. Yeah. You need to decide like, what is qualified. That means, for example, um, if you want a housewife, you want an income is 2,000 ringgit, uh, and they do this and they stay this and whatever, you tick, 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 and you cannot close, that's your business problem. Do you understand? So you need to understand your customers so well and what's a qualified lead. So you need to understand the content and the context that I'm always talking. So if an uh, a influencer comes to me, yeah, and I say that uh, I have 5,000 followers or 50,000 or 5 million followers, I don't really care because end of the day, I want conversion. That means... Are you even my target market? Are you even reaching out to my target market? So this is something that I want you to think yeah, before you um, engage them. I'm not saying it's don't engage them. I'm just saying that I don't like it because um, most of them um, like to show that they only have big followers. No, numbers is not an issue at, me at all. I only want leads, I want qualified leads, that's it. If I cannot close, that's my problem, but I want qualified leads, yeah? Belinda says, um, more likes and comments, um, yeah. But you need to make sure that um, it leads to conversion also. Yeah, uh, I've run pages, uh, ads that has no likes and I still make money. I have, um, in fact, uh, pages is, I mean, vanity, you see, Malaysians are a bit weird. Um, international also the same, yeah. If you go into a shop, let's talk real physical. If you go to a shop and you see two shops side by side, uh, both, uh, whatever, last shop, uh, both side by side. One without nobody's inside there. One, a lot of people inside there. We automatically will assume that the one that doesn't have any customer is bad. It's, it's our fault. We do that all the time. Yeah? Uh, and we go into the one that it has a lot of more people. Doesn't mean that it's good, it's just more people. Same thing with Facebook. If I compare two, even me, even me, yeah? I compare two groups, two pages, yeah? one got 10,000 followers, another got two followers. I would definitely think that you are lousy, you suck, I'll come to this 10,000 automatically. So that is if you are in 
in the industry that you probably need to people do like that, then that's important. But other than that, I don't think so. Because like I said, when I run ads, it doesn't matter whether I got 10,000 or one purple in my Facebook, I will still do it well. So that's why I say you need to understand the content and the context because both argument makes perfect sense, but you need to understand things very well. What do you want? Yeah, end of the day. If you want vanity, I know a lot of business pay me for vanity, you know, they said, Charles, I don't care about conversion. Corporates are like that. They don't care. They just want uh, reporting and uh, corporates. Yeah? You'll be shocked. Uh, they are very different from startups. Uh. Uh, oh, I got 100,000 likes. Oh, good, good, good. They don't care sales, eh, corporates, because it's a different ball game. Eh? And, and then when I was thinking, why? Eh? Ah, then I realized they play the stock share market game. You understand? They can still lose money, eh? but their share goes up uh, 10 cents. They make billions. You know, it's like a different ball game. Now I understood why they don't really care about um, conversion or sales. You know, because at the end of the day, they play stock. So you don't want to stock, right? Share market, right? It's a different ball game from people like, I, mean, I don't know about you, but me, totally different. I want sales. <laughs> no sales, I die. I don't give a damn about my stock. I don't even have a stock, you know? So you need to understand all these things. You understand it or not? So you need to compare Apple to Apple. Never compare Apple to different people, yeah? So maybe you think that Grab doesn't make money. It's okay, you know? It doesn't make any sense, right? A startup um, or, or, you know, lose money. But at the end of the day, it's a stock regulation. All right. What else uh, y'all need help with? Yeah, let me see. Uh, Lane, is it do we get QR to use a promo code to identify closure? Yes, please use a code, use a tracking, use you know. Uh, are you good or not? I'm not saying that you shouldn't use them, but you need to try it. Yeah, it's not about the the awareness. Yeah? It's about whether it works for you or not because money is important as a small business owner. All right. Um, all right. Let me just see anything else. Any other questions? I will do the keyword research later SEO, yeah? Because a lot of you ask me, and I think will benefit you all also for today. But that is about, let's say, 4 o'clock, 4 to 4, 4.30, yeah? 4.30 to 5, around there. Any other answers you want? Now, I'm not a business coach, yeah, by the way. I'm not a business consultant. I'm a fellow business owner that teaching you what I've experienced, yeah? Do take note of this, yeah. And I've seen a lot of business coach dating like um, they, it's very different. Yeah, uh, I don't follow the conventional way of doing business. I only follow if my business survive or don't survive. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So whatever advice I'm giving you might not be a book advice or things that you like to hear, but I'm telling you from my experience. So I want to make that very clear to you. Yeah, I'm not a business coach at all. Any other questions? This is my Facebook. Any other questions you want to ask? Uh, hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, is it? Ah, yes, okay. Sir. Yes, I would like to ask, uh, um, as a new uh, new start, uh, new starter in um, in uh, drop shipping, uh, uh, I would like to know, uh, actually, um, are there any difficulties faced in drop shipping mm. okay let's say um i would like to uh, drop ship uh, to an overseas country okay so uh, basically are there any like um technical difficulties that can affect the drop shipping process yeah and uh, for example let's say if i wish to uh, source from another country uh, to drop ship to maybe um, North America, okay. So, uh, I, would there be uh, like um, hiccups? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that a question? Is that all? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Good. Um. All right. Um. Uh. What do I call you? Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. Okay. Hi. Now, um, again, uh, let me share a few story, yeah, so that you understand where I'm coming from. I'm a person that don't believe in e-commerce uh, as a startup. Listen to me very carefully, yeah, because to me, uh, they are Lazada, they are Shopee. It's very hard for people like me, uh, the game, to go into it, yeah, and because you need investors, you need to have a lot of products, you need to have a storeroom, you need to have uh, what do you call that? Uh, deliveries, yeah. Uh, customer support. I think, wow, that's what a complicated business to go into. So I never like it. I never like it until until I found drop shipping. All right. So I'm going to share with you. Uh, Shen, you're very lucky in a way because I spent my whole year this year to prepare for next year. Yeah, and um, that's what I've been doing. Yeah? Uh, one year training on my own to do drop shipping. So let me tell you why is it good. First, yeah. If you want to do drop shipping, please only focus on one product. Do not build a multiple website uh, to sell many things. Again, if you're targeting US, you must understand US for 350 million people. I think so. I don't quote me on that, but I think so. Uh, UK you got another couple of hundred million. Yeah. Um, Germany, I don't know how many million. Yeah. But if you target all these people and you're using Facebook ads, I assume, correct? Yeah. Yes. There's there's about what a billion target market, and I, I did my calculation. Yeah, I did my calculation. Twenty five sales a day. Yeah, twenty five sales a day, at the average price of thirty dollars. Times four. That means four products. That's it. Four industry. Four products will make you one million USD sales in a single year. Do you know that? That's it. So then that opened up my eyes. Yeah, because. A billion USD every single year. So let's say now my net profit, we talk about net profit because I did my research. Let's say my net profit is uh, one third. That means if the cost is $10, I sell it at $30. $10 is my cost plus shipping, plus shipping. Eh? $10 is my marketing cost. You understand? So one third, eh? remember the golden rule? One third, one third, one third, I make 10, 30%. So one million a year on average, I will make to about 230,000, which can give me 1.3, 1.4 million US ringgit every single year net profit. Now, that is a business I'm interested in. Cool? So that yes. is all the good things first. Yeah. So remember the golden rule, only sell one product at a time. I'll give you an example later because I've already built mine. Now, number two, all the negative things. Ah, you want a good negative or a bad negative? Um, both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start with the bad negative. The bad negative is this. Um, you please invest in a third party like Yakufi. Yakufi is a drip shop, drop shipping company that do the shipping for you. Do not engage yourself. Do not think that you can do on your own. So let them do for you. Let them go and buy, let them go and source. You tell them what you want, you go and get it. Yakufi is one of the best. Use it. I give this to you because I use it. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, they're trustworthy. So use them. Now the problem is this. Um, Good problem or bad problem? I go both. Bad problem is this. Uh, recently, this month, you know, uh, these three months, yeah, China and the US has war, correct? So when they have war, trade war, uh, your problem of uh, shipping will get delayed. Two weeks, three weeks will get delayed. So that's uh, very bad. Your know, customers will complain. Your refund rate goes up. You know, that's number one. Number two, uh, if you're selling things like clothes or you know whatever, it's okay. But if you're selling like things to eat, be careful because um, you might get into problems. You might get sued also. So please don't go into things that can claim, like can slim. Facebook is so difficult. Vitamins, you know, don't do all those things. Don't do health supplement. I know a lot of people do supplement. I know a personal friend that sells Tokal Ali to US. Oh, he makes a killing. Yeah, but uh, I didn't know that he has a lot of lubang. A lot of lubang. Let me see, he has a lot of hole. What am I translating? He has a lot of ways to go into the custom. It's a different ball game. When I try to do that, I get blocked here, I get blocked there, yeah? So that's another thing, yeah, uh, that is difficult. Um, make sure you get a good supplier. So to me, uh, the biggest problem is if you get a bad supplier, they will not deliver to you or they will deliver slow. That is why I use a third party. Let them earn a little bit. It's okay. Yakufi takes about 10, 15% of my income, but it's okay. Let them take, yeah, because at the end of the day, you want a third party. You want somebody who can work with you. 
And uh, believe it or not, uh, China still got a lot of scammers. And um, in fact, not only China, like, everywhere got scammers. Uh, Malaysia also is a, one of the biggest scammers in the whole wide world. Uh, so all these are things that I think you need to take note of. Yeah. Number two, the most difficult thing is your Facebook ads will get banned. I guarantee you this. Uh, when you're running ads on Facebook, you will get banned on Facebook. So you need to have um, accounts because if your Facebook is doing $1,000 sales a day, $10,000 sales a day, $50,000 sales a day, um, and you can scale up because you don't keep inventory, you just sell, you know, you just sell, you can just focus on selling, so I like it. As a marketer, I love his business model, I just sell. Uh, you will get banned. The moment you get banned, you need to quickly duplicate it. So make sure you have a double uh, account or triple or 10 or 100 accounts or whatever. So that the moment it goes down, another account comes up, boom, you continue the ads. You understand? And that's where the problem comes in because you need to share your pixel. Write it down very carefully. Share your pixel on Facebook so when you get banned, um, other people, other accounts can still continue with the pixel. You understand? If not, you're going to retrain that again, you're going to lose two, three months, uh, which is amazingly terrible. Okay? Um, other than that, shouldn't be a problem. Now, if you're really, really worried about this, uh, you can sell in Amazon. They will handle the shipping, they will handle everything. You just buy stock, send to Amazon, and you do the marketing. Now, uh, Amazon got cheap product, expensive product. So don't, don't care. Uh, I will never sell cheap products. I will do a brand, I will do copywriting, I will do a beautiful, you know. Um, I'll show you exactly how it's easier for you to understand. Yeah. Um, find your angle, find one angle, and uh, focus on one niche. One niche only. One problem, one customer. Market to them because in the US, in the UK, it's a different ball game. Yeah. All right. So since you're doing drop shipping, I will just give you an example here. Uh, this is one of it. I use Shopify. Um, what am I selling? One glance, what am I selling? Uh, uh, for room for arthritis. Correct. So that's my problem I'm solving. You see, do not sell products, sell a solution. You understand? So when you sell a solution, it's easy to, to, to market it, yeah? Because people will pay, they will pay anything to, to get their paid off, anything. And uh, this is um, Shopify, lah. So you can take this template, you can use it, you can copy me 100%. Um, and uh, that's it, Shopify. I, I, don't, I don't bother, yeah? I sell it at um, $29. Uh, guess what's my cost? Um... Not too sure. Overall cost, including marketing, everything? Including shipping. Shipping first. Remember the golden rule? I said at 30 minutes. Uh, less, less than 10, $10. Than 10. Correct. So this cost, if you go to, uh, just go to Alibaba, eh? just to just show you. Uh, this is, this is a, it's not even an arthritis glove. It's, it's just marketing. It's a glove, right? But I make it into arthritis glove so that it sells. Yeah. Um, So I'm happy you asked this question because I spent one year and I'm summarizing in 10 minutes for you. Yeah, so it's 369. Of course, you deal directly, you can pay half price. You know that, right? Whatever you see here is already, you know, a uh, price, but you call them and you order. Um, nah. So it's 160, yeah, um, $2. So plus shipping, another $2, $3, $5. You got it, right? So that's it. Um, I, I have a question. Um, uh, if use the um, just now the uh, website um, the uh, what sorry what what was the website you 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 uh you uh, hmm. so how does the process go I mean um, the okay we identify what product to promote to buy to sell but uh oh. how are they like um. Uh, do uh, where do I put my goods? Yeah, uh, these are drop. Sorry, these are drop ship. Uh, they are drop ship shipping. But I understand that um, um, a simple search in Alibaba.com, they are also drop shippers. But how do they connect? Uh, what I'm trying to ask is, yeah. okay, they yeah. this one. There's a, there's a many companies like this. Don't I mean this is just one of it. Yeah, uh, um, they will go and buy the product. They will check the stock and then they deliver to your customer. So the warehouse they handle. They are just like Amazon. You understand? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So instead oh. of Amazon, you use Yakufi because I don't like to sell on Amazon because Amazon uh, is like Shopee to me. Ah, uh, 
people go to Shopee at uh, one cheap price. Amazon also the same thing. But if I sell it Shopify, people think it's a little bit higher value. Remember the golden rule. To make a million USD, you only need 25 sales at $30 a day. So I don't want to sell thousands. I don't want to sell, I mean, of course I want to sell thousands, but the point is I just want to make a million first. Then I can make 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million. You know, you can scale up. So to me, I don't really need a warehouse. I don't keep stock. I just do small, small things first. You understand? Yes. Uh, one more thing, Chen, for you. Once you do on Shopify, I want to give you this for you, yeah, Chen, because I like you. Where are you from? Huh? I'm, I'm from, uh, I'm currently in uh, Aradamansara. Oh, near my office only. Um, once you make money on Shopify, you go to Flippa, you can sell it, you know, for another 30 times the value, 10 times the value. So build it on Shopify. You understand? Because people trust Shopify in America. And when you make money, you can sell it, flip it, yeah? Um, uh, oops, sorry. It's not Shopify keyword. Uh, you, you can sell it for like... Um, a lot more money. You know what I'm saying? Let me just get you. So if you're making like 10,000 a month, you can sell it for 300,000. If you're making like 8,000 a month, you can sell it for 48,000. So people will buy your Shopify business because once you set it up everything, uh, you can earn multiple income. Cool? Yeah, now, yes. now you know why, why I don't like uh, local e-commerce, but I like uh, American uh, things. I, I'm going to offend a lot of people, but... Uh, it's okay, yeah. I think I think I think yeah, I mean comp about. competition is fine. Yeah, there's yeah, always I'm... competition. Yeah. Thank you I'm so good. much. Thank you. Yeah. If, if I if I earn money, yeah, I will uh, send you a hamper to your office. What do you mean if you earn money? I will summarize for you some <laughs> super cool tips. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there any other thank questions? You. Okay, thank thanks. Thank thanks. you, thank you. Okay, uh, let me just answer. Uh Amila, how do you expose and attract? I already know Facebook, I already know Google, I already know SEO. So Amila, I already have certain weapons that I have, yeah? Uh, all these weapons, uh, I, I use it all the time. Because if you can sell on Facebook, you can sell any country in the world. It's the same concept, yeah? Um, B, just curious, how sellers ship overseas for cheap price? Uh, yeah, just use uh, third-party software. I, I don't know how they ship, I don't know what software they use, I mean, what platform they use. I just know that when I pay money, I get my products there and I can try. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not the answer you want, right? Uh, but I really don't know, I really don't know. Yeah? I engage a third party to handle for me and I don't really care. I pay you money, you do for me a good job and I, that's all I care. I don't know what you use, I don't bother. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I can't answer you that. Uh, I mean, is there any tips, do's and don'ts for doing Facebook ads targeting overseas? Uh, same, yeah, it's all about customers. Yeah, the golden rule of Facebook ads is always awareness. After you target them through video or through uh, whatever image, yeah, um, and then uh, retarget, re retarget, remarket to them, remarket to them. You understand? Remarket to them. And then once you get customers, build your audience, get a lookalike audience. And that's the only fundamental that I teach on Facebook that I use on myself awareness, conversion, um, train Facebook. Get it better, uh, build lookalike audience as many as you can, educate, put in more budget, yeah, and the problem continue to solve. Yeah. But I spend money yeah, in the first 2000 ringgit. That's my golden rule. If I build a website like this, okay, hold on. Yeah. If I build a website like this, yeah, I spend only. Uh, let me, let me tell you my brain, huh? uh, uh, this is what I do. Um, product research, copywriting, you can see that I only talk about benefits, very rarely about features, all benefits, benefits, benefits. Yeah? Uh, I will spend about two weeks, correct? Two weeks uh, maximum yeah, to come out this. Mm, it looks very simple, but I put a lot of um, in, in the image so that it looks expensive. Yeah? Uh, because end of the day, what people see is what people buy. Correct? So I put it expensive because in the market, I know that people can sell for nine ringgit and uh, people can sell for 71 ringgit and people can sell for 23 ringgit. 
So the only difference is the copywriting and the branding. You understand? So that is what I put a lot of effort. Uh, and I'll spend 2,000 ringgit. If that 2,000 ringgit, I cannot make back my money, I will burn the project. That means I will not do anymore. That project I know cannot sell, I don't sell. But I always ask myself this. Before even I burn that money, if other people are selling, yeah, why can't I sell at this price? I, I, will, I will do my research. Yeah, I will, I will go to Amazon. I will go to see what people buy. I'm not just simply you know, pick a figure there. I will do all my research. Uh, I, I will see what other people are selling. Yeah, I will see what average people are buying. Yeah, I will go into Facebook groups. I will reverse engineer every one of my competitor. So technically, I will not sell the cheapest. I will probably sell a little bit more expensive because this is my, my father's uh, golden rule when I started business. Do not ever sell in the middle ground. He told me this. He's not a businessman, by the way. Uh, he, he started a lot of business, but he failed. But he's a very smart man. He's a very good uh, employee, yeah? but very smart man. He just had probably no time, I would say. Yeah? Never go in the middle. You either sell the most expensive or you sell the most cheapest. Because at the end of the day, if you go middle, people will compare you to the cheapest and expensive. If you go to the expensive, you compare people who want more expensive things. You understand? If you go cheap, people will compare you to one who are more cheaper. So then I would think, smart man. So go to the highest. So I look at the highest. Yeah. If people can sell at eight dollars, yeah. So people can sell at uh, fourteen dollars, twenty-four dollars. It doesn't mean cheap is good. Cheap is only two thousand seven. Twenty-five dollars is three thousand. Yeah. So I look at the thing. It's all just probably here got logo. That's it. It's all the same product. So once you understand this, have fun. Twenty-six dollars for nine thousand. So probably this. Yeah. So do your research, uh, focus on one product, only one, eh? and uh, do it because then you can really drill into the customer, you understand their pain point, you understand the things, and uh, that's what I do. I will never sell anything that doesn't solve a problem. You understand what I'm saying? So if you ask me, do I sell coffee? Yeah, if it can solve a problem. Will I sell a cloth? Yeah, because I got no money to build a brand like Apple. I got no money to build a brand like uh, KFC. Is KFC burger nice? Is a McDonald's burger nice? No, it's not. Yeah, it, They build a brand on it, but I don't have that time. Again, you need to understand the content and the context. If your business wants to build up good, big, you know, like DMC, my, my company is DMC Trading. That one, yes, I build up big brand, correct. Yeah, But other than that, money is money. Uh, it's very different. Yeah? So you need to understand two things I'm talking. Yeah, Because I, I do, um, I'm speaking to you as a business owner also. At the same time, a money maker. All right. Um, okay, Amila, can you suggest a software that loyalty point to attract customer comes to our website? Loyalty point to attract customer to come to our website. Uh, Amila, I don't understand your context. Do you want a software that have loyalty points? What do you mean by loyalty points? Uh, you have a follow-up question, Amila, because I don't understand what's a loyalty point to attract customer to our website. Um, what I attract people from my website is I usually, uh, if I want to create awareness, I usually give a lead magnet or a tripwire. A lead magnet is something in exchange. Yeah. So for example, um, I target people who have uh, attractive pain. Yeah. So what I like to target, uh, if I want to do this technique, yeah, to, to bring them to my website, I will, I will give them something in exchange. Yeah. For example, I will give them a video on how to handle arthritis or tell them a uh, research on how to cure arthritis for free in return for their customer. You know, like, like this video. So this is what I do. Yeah, I give them a video. Uh, I call it a link magnet. Yeah. Uh, I give them this. Take uh, it's free. Take, take. Yeah. Only people who are interested will want and give me the email. Once I get an email, my job is to market to them. As a marketer, that's my job. Until you buy or until you say, thank you very much. I opt out from the email or I opt out, don't message me anymore. People will know what to do, but your job is to market. So uh, is that what you meant? Because I don't know what is loyalty point. I'm so sorry. I don't know a lot of things. Uh, Michelle, is there any way to exclude gays? Uh, my brother is a marketing agency that is helping him to produce this for his personal training service. Ah, I know, yeah. Of course, yeah, when you're doing gym and uh, 
all this, um, you know, uh, fitness, definitely, yeah, gays, yeah, I understand. I understand what you mean. Uh, unfortunately, yes, there's a way, yeah. Um, Michelle, uh, you're targeting, can I assume that you're using Facebook ads? Yeah. Okay, so let me just share with you, yeah. Uh, this is very common because a lot of people say, I don't want to target gays or target, uh, again, uh, again, do understand the content and the context, yeah? Because I want to talk about this straight to your point, yeah? Uh, Indonesian, Bangladesh, you know, uh, foreigners. Again, I have nothing against them. I have a lot of customers uh, and a lot of people who pay me yeah, from different, different countries I just mentioned. Even gays, nothing wrong. But I understand what you meant. You meant that I want to target, maybe we get it simple for, you know, um, easy for people, uh, untargeted people. Is that okay? So it can be women, it can be Malay, it can be English, it doesn't have to be racist. It's just, I don't want Malay. I don't want Chinese. You know, if I'm selling a, a beef, uh, I would not target an Indian who is a Hindu. It makes common sense. If I'm selling Babi, I would not sell to, to, to a Malay, a Muslim. You know, common sense. If I'm selling a beef, I would not target, uh, sorry, I just mentioned beef, right? If I'm selling a chicken, I would not target vegetarians. You understand? Uh, because it doesn't, you know, it's offensive to them. So let's pick it. The, the people that we want to exclude, yeah, it's easier that way. Um, sure, that is where, like I said, when I do Facebook ads, I run a awareness campaign and then I target them. Now, Facebook has an option called look alike audience. That means if you got a customer that you really want, you upload a database. You know, Facebook doesn't you allow you to to target people who are gay or non-gay or straight or preferences. Facebook don't like that. Yeah? Facebook will ban you if you target like that. Uh, so you can't actually target. But there's a look around, uh, way around that. Um, you tell Facebook, hey, I want this kind of people. And that's it. And Facebook will know one. Yeah? Facebook will know. For example, uh, uh, Facebook is so smart. Yeah? You just have to educate them a little bit here and there. Tell them, look like audience. This is what I like. I put more money. You know What I don't like, you can also exclude people that you don't want. Do you know that? Um, so you can educate them. Yeah, you can educate Facebook. Um, people who like your page, people who don't like your page, people who have not liked your page. Uh, there's so many ways you can exclude, uh, you can include people. Now, the good thing about this is um, you just have to wait for a while. And uh, just to let you know, uh, I've been targeted by Wagyu. Okay. So that this casino ads mm, target me. Yeah. Because you need to understand how Facebook works. Uh, most people who like personal fitness are probably gays. Makes sense. So that is why Facebook is doing that. So you can teach Facebook, no, Facebook, I don't want this. Tell me, I don't want this. Yeah? But you cannot do any settings. I doubt there's any settings on Facebook. If you ask me directly, that's none. Yeah? But you can tell Facebook who you want and Facebook will focus on who you want rather than who you don't want. You understand? And uh, do you know that when you message people, you talk to people, Facebook also will know. So sometimes you say that, uh, you know, um, thank you very much, or you don't talk to people, but you spend time reading, non-reading, people know all these things. Yeah, people know all these things. People is very smart, yeah, very, very smart. All right, let me just go down. Okay. Uh, I hope I'll answer you, yeah. And your copywriting, lah. you also can put your copywriting in a way subtly, yeah, put it in that, um, this is strictly professional. We do not entertain hanky-panky. So up to you, yeah? Malaysians might read it and understand, but maybe they don't read it also. So, or you want to go more subtle, I don't know. You can say you can put a rainbow there and then put no. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No rainbows allowed. Uh, people who are the LGBT will probably understand that, like, yeah? Uh, test, yeah, just test. But in the settings, I doubt we can target uh, preferences like that because uh, they will get sued uh, if they, you can target like this, yeah? All right, um, Hans, Hans, yeah? How to target high value customer who buy high product Facebook ads? Same thing, educate, yeah? There's no such thing as targeting rich people. Facebook doesn't allow you to target based on that, yeah? Um, in US, yes. In US, you can target people who have high income, uh, people who are just got married, People who stay in certain, you know, you know, nine zero two one zero, you know, postcode. Uh, Malaysia is a bit hard, yeah. Why? Why I tell you that? Uh, simply because, let's say Monkara, yeah. If I teach you, Monkara got rich people, yeah. A lot of rich people. A lot of foreigners, yeah. 
got a lot of expatriates, high level, yeah. Got a lot of poor people, yeah. Got a poor Bangladeshi, yeah. Got a poor Indonesian, got. Got a poor Malay, got. Got a poor Chinese, sure. So Monikara is not exclusive for rich people. Do you understand? And according to Facebook ads here, um, in Malaysia, I'm talking Malaysian, uh, Facebook ads the default is I think 15 kilometer radius. So unless you know how to exclude the 15 meter radius and zoom into what you want to zoom in, but then the location is too small. In the US is different. In the US, if you get a postcode like 90210, you will know only the rich and the elite only stays there. No poor people stays there. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. So here the postcode, yeah, like whatever postcode they can target on Facebook or Google, you got 50 kilometer radius. Everybody is there. Yeah. It's our gerrymandering in uh, politics. Yeah. Uh, blame the politicians. Again, okay, blame them. Yeah. Just blame them. So you can't target the rich people, but I can give you a technique to target the rich people. Yeah. Um, what does the rich people do that people don't other local people do? For example, yeah. If I ask you, do you all know who is Tiger Woods? I want to teach you this target thing. Do you know who's Tiger Woods? Sure. Are you able to target on race? I don't think so. You can target by religion, uh, what do you call it? Languages, but not race, yeah. Who is Tiger Woods? Like, come. The rest of you, come. I'll teach you this target thing. It works very well for me. Tiger Woods, who is Tiger Woods? Onka, Goff, Yong, Goff, anyone else? Tiger Woods, maybe I'll show you the face. Scan. Yes, he has a scandal, yeah? But what is Tiger Woods famous for in his sports? La? I know the scandal, yeah? You know why he's so famous? Because he's the first black that plays golf. Uh, he has a, a blonde model, you know? Uh, unbelievable, yeah? So first black play golf, it's already crazy. It's like Chinese playing Sepata Kro, do you understand? But having said that, uh, do you know that South Korea is better than us in Sepata Kro? So you cannot say that uh, mm, Sepata Kro is Malay, yeah? It's quite embarrassing uh, for Malaysians because the South Korea are better than us now. Okay, anyway. Uh, but during that time, golf was a white man's game. He was the first black that won championship. Yeah, uh, same like tennis. You know, it's for the it's for the rich, for the elite. Yeah, uh, only the rich. And uh, when the Venus sisters came in, uh, they also everybody knows them, correct? Because of that. And of course, Tiger Woods got scandal. Uh, but let me ask you this: How many of you here play golf? Young, Belinda, Ellen, Chen, Young. How many of you play golf? So if I'm targeting sports equipment for golf and I put Tiger Woods, I want to learn this very well. You all know Tiger Woods and you all know golf, but are you my target market when I'm selling golf equipment? Because how many of you play golf? Do you understand what I'm saying? So put it in a way about you want to target the rich, the elite, the business people. Same concept I'm teaching you. Listen, eh? So what if I target Lee Westwood? Anyone know who is Lee Westwood? Lee Westwood, anyone know who's Lee Westwood? Sorry, wrong spelling. Anyone knows who's Lee Westwood? Anyone? So, I guarantee you this, if you know Tiger Woods, you probably can be a golfer, you probably not a golfer. But if you know who's Lee Westwood, I guarantee you, you are a golfer. Or you're very interested in the golf game, either one. Agree? Lee Westwood is actually damn good. You all don't know because you don't play golf. You're not a golf fan. Yeah? So, for those who play golf, you definitely know who's Lee Westwood. So, do you understand? If I want to target, I won't target. Tiger Woods, even though I'm selling golf equipment, I will target Lee Westwood. So now you start thinking, hmm, if I want to target the rich people only, yeah, you cannot put like people like Mercedes. You cannot put things like Monkeara because everybody's there and everybody, even the poor or the middle class or the rich, they want to drive a Mercedes. They'll be still interested. Does it make sense to you? Yeah? Another technique is what does rich people know that probably the poor doesn't know? For example, a uh, product of a pen that is worth a thousand ringgit. I, I don't know, I'm not rich, yeah? I'm just giving some examples. 
Uh, the rich people see, they will know. So they will know they will click because they are targeted. You understand? Uh, maybe I can put like um, um, uh, Royal Malaysian Club, Royal Club of uh, Malaysia. Uh, probably only the rich and the elite goes there. Uh, so you need to find things that only the rich knows and the poor doesn't know or the middle class doesn't know. That's how you target them. Yeah, You cannot be doing things like general, like who wants to be a millionaire? I want to target people who are rich. I want to target people who are Petronas. You might think that Petronas is rich. No. Petronas also got poor people there. So it's all about your target market. Yeah, And same, why she was uh, if you're targeting the poor people and the rich people come in, also wrong. So for example, you say that poor people eat uh, tempeh, roti chai roti. The rich also eat roti chai nai. The rich also eat tempeh. Yeah? So it's your targeting. Yeah? But to me, targeting is secondary. To me, lah. Huh? Uh, what I say important is your image and your copywriting. Because at the end of the day, um, that Facebook will show to the right people. You need to aggregate. Yeah, the one that should show awareness, um, consideration, and conversion. If you do this correctly, train Facebook to do it well, yeah, you can. Yeah, so Facebook is smart. Uh -huh. Any other answers, question? Doreen, can we put Lee Westwood for example for Facebook publicity without concern? You will get you will get sued, Doreen. You cannot use people like that. But I'm talking about targeting. Um, Doreen, you need to understand in targeting, you can put a lot of targeting for famous people. Yeah, if if it comes out, um, I'm not sure whether you came to my class on Facebook, but on the interest there, you can actually put names. I'm just giving you an example. You can, yeah? Um, because Lee Westwood is a guarantee you a KOL for golf. He is famous for golf. Uh, people who know him will know what is golf, yeah? If I'm targeting golf. So, then if I if I want to think about it, uh, do rich people play golf? Mm, yeah, yeah. Middle, upper, to rich people play golf, yeah? Uh, poor people will not play golf. So, probably that's one thing. What do rich people drink? Yeah, don't like and put Shivas. Uh, everybody did chivas, yeah. No matter the 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 the, the this one, put certain things that only the rich likes. If you're targeting the rich, and put it in things that is, um, your 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 what do you call that? Your copywriting. I think that's more important. Yeah, that's what I do. Hmm? All right. Any more questions? Ling, just wondering why didn't you write articles? Ah, um, um, this is this is this is not an SEO site. This is a this is a sales site. Yeah. So, um, the concept is I run ads on Facebook. We do ads. Understand? Uh, are you suffering from arthritis? Uh, uh, are you struggling? Yeah. Uh, arthritis is painful, right? You cannot do gardening. You cannot play to your child. Uh, you know, you play games, you know, you want to, you are a professional gamer, you want to play uh, PS4 all the time, you know, all this my target market, eh? I zoom in to their pain points. So I make videos for all these people. So they read, wow, cool, there's a, there's a solution for me. Yeah. So now I bring them to my page here. So from the video, I bring them straight to my page here. Yeah. So they see, they see I can target how much the time they spend. So if they spend, they only go like that, then I know that I won't target them. But if they go up to like that, yeah, 20, 30 seconds, then I target them because I know they spend time reading it. Or they click on my shopping cart, they click, eh? whatever reason they don't buy. Oh, these are the people that I target them. And I said, hey, why you never buy? Yeah. So do you know that ads can do all that? Targeting how many seconds to spend? Google ads can do that. Facebook ads can know where you go in. Facebook ads know where you go in, uh, what, how long you spend, you know, what page you go in, if you have clicked many, many pages. So if people are really interested, technically, I will target them. Those who come in and get out, I won't target them. So I'm not wasting my money. That is why I said ads is so damn powerful. So I don't need articles because people here are not going to read. It's already good enough for here. You'll straight away buy because this is not an SEO site. SEO site is a different ball game. Yeah? 
different ball game. Maybe I'll show you one later, but it's a different ball game. But I'm showing you a site that I spread money to make money. So as long as my return of investment is uh, below my ten dollars, I'll be putting in more money and more money. Okay, Abila, can you suggest a new kind of branding that we can implement in our business? Branding, implement branding. Uh, I'll give you my definition of branding in a short while, Abila. Uh, full in. May I know what repeat? Oh, this is Shopify. This is Shopify. This is not WordPress, this is Shopify. Okay, this is Shopify. Yeah, this is Shopify. Okay, uh, share for Facebook ads. Should we create a specific landing page within our website? Yeah, landing page. I am a firm believer of landing page, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I'll show you an example in a short one, yeah. Uh, SEO and a sales site. I'll show you two in one, yeah. Two in one, all right. I'll give you some real life examples so you can understand. Uh, coming back to branding. Now, branding to me, yeah. Ayo. <laughs> okay. Again, yeah, I'm not here to challenge any branding gurus outside there, yeah, uh, or you know, branding experts. Yeah, again, this works for me and works for me very well. So I want to tell you what works for me. Is it fair enough? Now you all need to understand that branding is not about a logo, it's not about a color, it's not about the meaning of the logo. You know, I, I don't give a two cent suit what is the meaning of the logo and why I put a logo like that. Yeah, there's no meaning. There's none meaning. It's just a logo that I make in five minutes. Now, branding to me is I understand my customer so well. I understand the pain points. I understand why they buy, why they don't buy. Who's my target market? That is branding to me. Yeah. So do you think they care about my logo at all? Do you think that people in Amazon who makes millions of sales, they care about the logo? So I'm going to be very controversial with you because logo doesn't make a too suit of when you do business on the internet. Because who cares? Whether it's this logo or that logo. I mean, if I show you a proof here, yeah, you tell me which, which one will you buy? Oops, sorry. You, you don't buy because of a logo, you understand? You buy because the packaging, the way they present, it looks expensive, the copywriting. That is branding to me, not the logo or the colors, yeah? So I hope you understand this, yeah, Amila? Uh, now, having said that, I also have a big company. I'm not big, lab. my main company, my DMC. That I build a logo, that I build a brand, that even I copyright my logo, because I kiasu, don't want people to copy me, yeah? Because that is my main business. I want to sell it one day. So again, it all boils down to your objective of what you want to do. Yeah? If you want to make money, if you want to you know, hit and run, like I wouldn't even know whether this website will make money. Of course, I know that now. But when I first started, I don't know. So do I really want to spend so much money on a logo? No. I can change a logo later. Nobody will forget, nobody will care. So nobody will remember. I can include a packaging later. Uh, I call it an MVP, a minimum viable um, uh, product. The moment it's ready to sell, sell. Yeah, don't worry about so much. Yeah, then later. So I have two companies, um, two different businesses. One that I build my logo very well. Uh, hopefully that you know people see that people know. Oh, this is a quality company. One is for sales. So it's two different ball games. You need to understand this. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be a logo. I think it's amazing, important because when people see your logo in the future, your branding, people think it's expensive. Uh, my costs are never cheap, uh, never cheap, <laughs> never. So, but I offer quality. Yeah, so that's important in my branding. Uh, yes. So I hope I answer you. All right. Now for sure, just to give you. Uh, I always very scared to pronounce your name because I'm scared I pronounce it wrong. Yeah. Um, now um, I show you. I show you uh, um, some of the projects that I'm doing now. Uh. Now, do you all know that uh, under the government penjana? Um, there are a lot of uh, training for retrenched people, and I'm one of them. My company was appointed way before I'm CEO. I just got very lucky. I, I, I think I'm luck, or hard work, either one. Yeah. Uh, anyway, 
um, when I saw this happening, um, there were probably hundred thousands of people. So what I quickly did was I built a website, yeah, on uh, my website, and uh, I'm ranking a little bit below Pakiso, and I rank uh, below a company that I work very closely with. I'm ranked here. So this is what I call I rank two places, yeah. My company is DMC, right? So uh, this is called a landing page. Yeah, sure. This is a landing page. So it is for SEO. So you can see that uh, um, I wrote article, a, a simple article, but it actually works as a landing page. It's two in one. Yeah. So they, they want, they fill up. So that's my funnel. So if they want, they fill up. Yeah, they want, they fill up. Yeah, so they want, they fill up. So they fill up. So I call it leads. Only when I collect leads, I follow up. Hey, you want to join? Are you retrenched? Yeah. Uh, do you get fired? So they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I help them train. I get paid by government. Cool. Yeah. So this is a sales funnel. Uh, do I run Facebook ads? Yes, I run a lot of Facebook ads. I'll show you my Facebook ads also. So this is two in one. Yeah. Uh, Facebook ads and also Google. And also, you know what? I also run Google ads. I run three in one. Yeah. But um, let me explain to you one by one. Yeah. So let me show you. Um, I'll say this as a case study, yeah? I forgot my page, sorry. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, yeah, as training. Ah, here we go. Okay. So when I build this page, I don't really care about followers, okay? I don't care about the followers at all. Uh, I don't really, you know, um, um, you know, you know, social media people say you need to update your social media all the time, yeah? Uh, I don't do all of those. I, I don't update, yeah? Uh, I update once in a while, uh, because you know what? If I update, also nobody sees, nobody comment, you know, waste my time. So I run ads, that's all I do. Yeah, so when I run ads, uh, I think not 600 people, but it was zero, yeah? Straight away I run ads, yeah? So when I run ads, I also bring them to this page. You understand? So two in one, yeah? I ran for Google and I ran ads, so two in one. So technically, I, I, I just need to calculate because this is easy because uh, SEO is something that we do all the time. So it's quite easy for us, yeah? And of course, not much competition. Even though got thousands of people who got ERS training, um, they don't use SEO. So it's like, ah, so easy. You just, you know, uh, earn the money, yeah? It's like illegal, yeah? Um, but my point is, I run two in one, so I run ads, and I run this, yeah, and that's it. So when people click, yeah, I, the same thing. I also run Google Ads. I'm not sure, but I think I, I removed my ads already. Uh, I already removed my ads, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I removed already, yeah. Uh, ES training, ES training provider, anything with ES training, I rank, yeah. I already removed, I used to rank on top, yeah, on top. Uh, um, but it didn't work simply because people who click my ads they think that I am Pekeso. So they ask me, Oi, I want my money, boleh tak? You know, I became a Pekeso agent. Yeah, and I didn't like that. Yeah, I'm not a Pekeso agent, I'm a trading provider under Pekeso. Uh, and um, that's it. So, technically, if you ask me, do I make money from SEO? Yeah, I get one month about, I don't know, hold on, yeah, wife. From Google, how many sales I get? You are track, ma. She don't track. We don't track, huh? But you should track. But I can tell you that on average, maybe, how many comes in from without ads, one? Just come in from your own? No, that means, that means coming from Pekeso itself, the first one. That means not with follow-up, one, not with follow-up. They just come in direct to Pekeso. Then Pakiso give us GL. Daily? No la, GL. Okay, my wife says I get about one to two sales. Yeah? I don't think so la. I think, not that much. Yeah? Because one sale I get paid 4,000. So two sales I get 8,000. I doubt it la. I don't earn so much. Yeah? Uh, on Google, I think maybe two or three, one week from this. Yeah. Uh, of course, my Google has a little bit more. I think I shared this with you, right, during my class, so it shouldn't have a problem. I already shared with you how you can get this, so that's how I get. Um, not much. Yeah, so if you're selling, Ying, you're selling, uh, and uh, Riley, you're selling, um, 
baby clothes or baby food or children clothes and your product is 10 20 ringgit then it doesn't make sense at all to use a ceo does it make sense that's what i'm telling you yeah because you will not get a lot of sales you will not yeah trust me on that but if it's a property if it's something like high profit margin oh seo is amazingly good yeah so all right yeah does it answer you sure i used two in one i can use facebook ads i think i use uh, the only reason why is I'm being lazy. Actually, you shouldn't do like that. Right? You should do separate. Separate one for SEO, write article uh, nicely, one for Facebook ads, yeah? but I'm lazy. So that's why I do two in one. Very unconventional, but it works for me, I'm okay. All right, Michelle. Uh, for Google ads for Oracle, 109 clicks, only one put an inquiry and details. Ah, bad, definitely bad, very bad. Uh, Michelle, you want me to look at your ads, your Facebook, uh, your, your website? Give me your website, if you don't mind. I will tell you why. I probably can only understand why. Uh, probably, yeah, because two reasons. Lah. Because you're running Google Ads, it should be targeted. Yeah? So most of the time, probably you're not doing a landing page. Of course, I'm not seeing your ads yet. Uh, let me just Google your ads now. And um, probably it's, a, it's, a, it's not a landing page. That's why you know you're getting very low. You should get at least, I would say 10% minimum yeah, leads or 20% because it's very targeted. Yeah, so that's probably the main thing. Your website is down there. Or maybe you give it a wrong link, is it? So please do a landing page. Landing page is... Uh, Landing page is important. And um, yeah, you can just do like mine and uh, remove all the other links. So people cannot click other. Either they come here, they read or they get out. Yeah, of course you can do targeting. Uh, I don't do targeting for this because, um, because of our business. Uh, we don't have the manpower to cope. Okay, I got lucky, like, I would say. Yeah? A lot of people are retrenched now. You need to understand that if, if if it's a normal business, I would definitely do marketing based on how many how many how many times they come in, uh, what they come in, where they come in, and things like that. Definitely, I'll do remarketing to these people. Yeah. I mean, this is WordPress. I use WordPress. Yeah, this is WordPress. Okay. Uh, remove this. Uh, Michelle, remove this. This is damn irritating. Nobody will fill up, but I guarantee you. Uh, a web, web designer said to do this. Yeah, I used to like this also, but it doesn't work after testing. So remove this. Uh, unless you are giving me something that is so amazing. I can leave magnet there. But uh, this doesn't give me anything. So I'll remove this. Yeah. Um, where's the landing page? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna to talk to you and also talk to everyone else. Yeah, website. You must remember this. Put it in your in your head. Yeah, features tell, benefits sell. Talking about yourself is shocks and dirty. Remember the golden rule in marketing. So, learn more about us. You are telling me I come in. I want to learn uh, about you. Ah, uh. walau eh. As a customer, you should solve my problem. Do you see that, Michelle? Do you understand what I'm saying? Why should I go into your website and I have to learn about you? You come and tell me what you can help me. It's like go to a salesman and say, hey, can you help me uh, take that? No, no, no. You must learn about my business. The customer will probably slap you. But on the internet, everybody does that. You know why? Because it's built by a web designer. No offense, but they are not marketers. They are web designers. A marketer will never make that fundamental mistake. A marketer will never talk about you until you're ready to close the sale and say that, hey, why should I buy from you? Ta, 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 ta. But first, it's always, what can I do for you first? That's the important thing. Yeah? So having said that, remove this. Who we are, not interested. Um, what we do, not interested. So again, go to your Google. What's the problem you're solving? Because uh, project management is different from purchase. Reporting is different from budgeting. 
So you need to know this. Yeah, you cannot do everything in one website. I know it's going to be very difficult for you to understand this because I took many years to understand why I'm offering so many things, ma. But customers usually only want one solution. That's it. Yeah. So give them the one solution that you think is the best. Yeah. I like I like the demo actually. I like this. Maybe you should talk more about this. What can a demo do for you? What can I do for you? Yeah. And you know what? Why why not I help you? And if you're interested, collect the leads. I think that should be your focus. Don't talk about your company at all. I think this should be good. Request a code, yeah, implementation, customization. I think it's good, yeah. Uh, remove all the form. Forget about all these things. Um, probably all you need to do is uh, name, last name, uh, and uh, email. No, sorry, no last name. Name, email, and phone number. These three things. You see, normal people will not even want to fill up this form. Unless I want something from you, I want a demo, and if I want that, I'm a target market. I guarantee you, I I don't know, even I'm reading it, I don't know what you do, you know, because I'm not a target market. It's okay one, because my company is probably too small for you, so you also probably don't entertain me. So all these things you need to put one, because if I'm interested, I will put it in. You understand? So your job is to eliminate, not to attract. Uh, yes. So that's what you do. You understand? Eliminate and only zoom in to your target market, and that's it. So. I'm sure your target market will probably want to go Oracle. I mean, a small company like mine, I hear the word Oracle, I scared because I know it's six figure. Correct or not? Forget about even you know engaging you. I know it's six figure. That is a low six figure. All right. Uh, Onka asking me software four ten. No, I'll do it four thirty. No problem. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just a very simple software. All right. So, I mean, uh, am I correct to say that dive into our customers on landing page instead of website? Yeah. People are already keen on what they want to hear. Nobody is keen in you. Nobody is interested in me. If I'm here for three hours uh, talking about myself, I will probably not even have a single person attending my, my class anymore. Do you realize that I never talk about myself, huh? but I'll get a lot of sales from you if I want to do sales. You know why? Because even the moment I add value to you, some of you will say, hey Charles, uh, do you train uh, SEO? Uh? Do you train um, Facebook ads? Uh? Uh, you know, that's what will happen. I don't have to sell. So the, the way of doing business is very different today already. You need to add tremendous value. And I like this, yeah? But the front part, all removed. So completely remove every single thing. I mean, in the landing page, lah, huh? not, not your website. So use my example. Actually, I have a very lot of things on, but I remove everything. I only focus on one. So if you're interested in e-commerce, I give that e-commerce. If you're interested in um, social media, I only give social media. So only focus on what they want. Don't confuse people with too many things. Yeah, Because your job is not to sell. You know? Your job is to capture the attention, get the leads. Oh, once you get the lead, then you can do anything you want. Correct or not? You can market, you can sell. You can talk about yourself, you can face to face, you can do Zoom meeting. All right, any more questions? Okay, Zira is asking, do you think posting content is not related to any product I'm selling? Uh, as long as you can uh, try to push it back to yourself, it's okay. Yeah, for example, um, uh, for example, eh, um, what is trending today? Uh, okay, the 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 uh, Zira, you don't mind, I said this, uh, the Barbie that entered the uh, Alamanda Putrajaya. Yeah, uh, everyone was talking about the Barbie, right? It was very really viral, right? So if you um, are doing, actually, I don't know what Zira you're doing. So if let's say you're selling a product, use that, you know, and say that. Sekarang beli baju dekat Alamanda pun tak halal sudah. Why don't you buy from me? You know, make it fun, make it interesting, but come back to one one round, come back to yourself. Directly or indirectly, it's okay. If it's not related, don't wait, just talk about things because there's no point. Only talk about things that is going to make value to yourself. So I was asked, is it going to be value to my company? And I'm not, not hard sell, not even soft sell, but just adding value to people. But it's related to me. Yeah, that's what you want to do. So viral video is definitely good. I use it all the time, uh, but it must be related to my business. Lah. Trading topics, yes. 
political issues, no. Don't do political, never do religion because it will backfire. Especially me, because I do a lot of government projects, right? And uh, today, a different government. Tomorrow, it's a different government. And uh, I make fun of one government. Tomorrow, the government changed. They read my Facebook. Oh, Habis. People will check everything nowadays. Any other questions? Okay, I mean, Charles, does it make sense to pay someone to teach Facebook ads for a lifetime coaching? I mean, nobody will teach you for a lifetime. 2,000 will probably get you three days, one day, two day training. So, is it make sense? Uh, yes, I, I believe so. Uh, but you must make sure that whoever that trains you is doing it on your own. You understand? I only pay people uh, to train me. I never, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Huh? I use YouTube all the time, but if I want a mentor, I'll pay the guy uh, a lot of money. And I, and I pay people like the top click bank, yeah, when he got a course, uh, people who spend, you know, when I spend millions on Facebook, I think I'm cool. Until I see people who spend hundreds of millions in a month on Facebook. Then I was thinking, what the heck? You can do so much. And I learned from these people, yeah, um, that kind of things, yeah. So you need to understand that paying someone a higher level is the shortest path. If you don't want to pay, read books. Books are amazing because there's a condensed all their life, yeah, uh, story in a book, yeah. Uh, but definitely buy, yeah, definitely buy because free things on the internet can be dangerous. Yeah, like a lot of questions you ask me are probably things that you learn from other people here and there, right? But it's just theory. Yeah, but no practicality. So when I speak, you only hear two things. If I know, I will talk to you. You will know that it's in-depth. If it's not, then it's just um, things that you can get everywhere. Because information is out everywhere. So, all right. Keep your questions coming. I will share for you, yeah? I will, I will do a, a keyword analysis for your SEO. Yeah? And then you can take a look. Okay, the software. Is, is the one that I like, it's called Ahrefs. Okay, um, for SEO, this is by far the best tool in the world. And I believe me, I use so many tools, yeah? And uh, um, I'm quite good, yeah, in SEO. Why I got good? Because I make money, yeah, it's just all. So this is one of the best tools that I've used for reverse engineering people. So there's not a lot of you ask me, what keyword should I use, what keyword? Actually, don't even think. Just use this tool. Uh, you can try for uh, seven days. You pay $7, it's good enough for a day, yeah? You don't need to pay full amount, yeah? Sure. So, for example, um, give me a competitor here, one biggest competitor in Malaysia. And you don't have to listen to any SEO people anymore. You're gonna do it on your own and uh, and then you can talk back to your competitor and say, the, the SEO agency and say, I want this keyword to be ranked. Other than that, don't talk so much. You can rank or not. You can rank, I pay you. You know, like that, yeah, you talk. <laughs> Come, give me your biggest competitor. You see, the, the biggest problem is this. Yeah? Most of you find keywords because you want to rank, but you do not know whether this keyword brings traffic and most importantly, this keyword brings money. Common sense, right? You are focused on keywords to rank, but you never focus on what brings money and what doesn't bring money. Yeah? Uh, what what kind of website is that? Das Sabul, Das, oh, Das Abdul Global .com. Okay, now it makes sense to me. I was like, what Das Abdul? All right. Uh, so I will take this example. This this is Shreff, Yeah, let me just open up uh, his website first. So he's ranked number one, right? Can I assume that? Actually, I have not studied him. I just found him, and it's like wow, quite quite king. Uh, this guy, I think. No, don't see his website. See his number one ranking. Who is number one ranking on Google? Anything. It doesn't mean anything, man. This fellow oh. does a lot of agent. That's why very... <laughs> uh, so it's not SEO low? I don't know. Yeah, You need to tell me no, whether it's SEO. Hey, for this, uh, uh, sure, I expect a pillow and a bolster. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are buying a, yeah, a bed also. So this is just good. 
Okay, come. Give me your number one competitor. There's ranking on Google. Ah, don't like, give me this. You're the reverse people, isn't it? Reverse engineer people. Wow, Ikea. <laughs> Ikea? Okay, let me take this guy. Lah. All right. Um, okay, maybe I'll show you how I do things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let me see. Yeah. So, this is called what? Pilosa. Ah. Oh no, it's okay. But Sonos sells um, mattress as well. Mattress. Okay, let's say um, okay, let's go to mattress uh, supplier. Okay. Uh, the first thing I right, to do is I will take a look at Google uh, autocomplete. Autocomplete means I think I told you in SEO. Um, here, yeah, whatever that is here is good. Yeah, and I also use uh, keywords everywhere, which I always share with you during the notes, you can take a look at the notes, it's all here. So Metros Malaysia, Sona Metros, Gita Metros, King Kong Malaysia, Download Pino. So these are keywords that are already ranking and got traffic. You know, so it's easy, you don't have to think, correct? Uh, this is how people search, Luxury Metros, Akami, Wono. So even though I'm not an expert in Metros, currently now I'm an expert because I can give you the exact keywords, yeah? But I do not know whether this keyword, now this is good, but I do not know whether this keyword uh, it's the only keyword, or maybe there's some more hidden keywords. So what I like to take is, maybe I'll just go to the first competition and go to this MFO, yeah, uh, who's ranked number one. All right, I'll just take him. Uh -huh. So I'll take him and now I'll go to the software, which is called uh, Ahrefs, uh, Site Explorer. Yeah, put it in. And all the details is gives to me. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Login. Michelle, uh, I recently heard that they're able to rank. To, yeah, if it's a new website, two to three months in Malaysian context, it's quite easy to rank, yeah? Uh, because you need to look at the competitive level also. If the keyword is very competitive, it can probably take six months to a year. So you need to understand that, yeah? Like, like for me, EIS training, I rank it within two weeks doesn't mean that it's, I mean, it's very good for me because I make good money, but nobody in the world will think and rank for ES training. Yeah, you understand? Because first of all, in the training industry, in my training industry, they don't use SEO. So I use SEO all the time. I make a lot of money and I don't think I want to tell them also because I keep it to myself. But there's certain keywords that is very hard to rank. For example, properties. Everybody uses SEO, I property, property guru, yeah? Because they make millions of money every single month. One house, they make 5% commission. Wow, why not, right? It's imagine, yeah, how much money they make. So different industry will be different. So I cannot answer you. Uh, it can be two weeks, it can be one month, it can be three months, it can be one year, but based on the industry. Yeah, yeah Michelle? Uh, okay, anyway, uh, I will look at this guy. So to me, this guy, um, sure for you, quite easy to rank because this URDR is, if it's below 30, technically it's easy to rank. Technically, yeah, it's easy to rank. Above 30, is hard. And I look at the uh, organic keywords here. Yeah, I just type it. So if I know, uh, uh, oh, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't want to click that first. Let me just. Uh, okay, never mind. So what he's ranking for is like Doma Metros. And this one, he get number one position. And uh, this is the one that I will target lah, because he makes money from him. Do you know what's Doma Metros? It's a brand, is it? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's a brand. So, so these are the keywords like Malay, Metros Malaysia promotion. He gets about 30 traffic every single month. Yeah, the volume is traffic lah. Position is position lah. Yeah? Uh, so that's what I do. The Metros by our sales, Metros factory outlet, uh, all these things. Because this is how people are searching and I'm going to this website. So now I know guarantee I can know that this is the one that makes him a lot of our traffic. So all this, the stuff I mentioned, um, doesn't make any sense anymore because he only gets this traffic. Probably he's not running for a lot of things. So that's number one. Uh, number two, lah. so you get the know why keyword is working very, very well. You understand? Uh, because of that, I just have to follow him and then I, I will just follow. Lah. Like Silent Night Metros, Arrow 4 Metros, Download pillar metros, yeah, uh, therapeutic metros, uh, and things like that. Yeah, so this guy is not optimized. I think your industry also not many people doing SEO, so good for you. 
if you do SEO, you should be able to rank number one, fish one. Yeah, I will say about three to six months. In order Does to that, do that mean he's also ranking a competitor's name as a keyword? Yeah. Uh, look, How do you embed that in your? But you can't put that in your page, right? Like in terms of content. Give me one. Hmm. Oh, because F F O, if I'm not mistaken, they serve many brands. But right. I give you a technique. I give you a technique. If you want to put your competitor name, right? Yeah. Can, uh, you do a blog and you do a roundup and say that top five mattresses in Malaysia, top ah. ten in Malaysia. So you put the keywords there, yeah, everywhere, and then you put yours is the best lah. That's what <laughs> I do. Or, you you do affiliate, yeah. If I get leads and other people, I pass to you. You give me commission lah. Also can. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh. Thanks, Charles. Welcome. So this will give you. Oh, by the way, we also look at this website, uh, just to go through the the um, the backlinks here, uh, under overview. So this guy got it's quite easy, lah. This guy got what uh, sixty six backlinks. So if you get about sixty six or more, you can win this guy on number one. So backlinks plays an important role, lah. Uh, no matter what people say, I think Google also like backlinks. All right. Um, hence baby food, Lynn. What do you want me to do with that? Usually, how do you get people to? I mean, how do you get the backlinks? You have to contact the website and say, "Hey, um, can you write about me? Is it like that?" No, I, I pay people to put my article in their website and oh. to get a backlink. So it's a lot of work. I need Is there a directory of websites? Like, how do you find this? There people? is. There is. I can give you a list if you okay, want. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, but uh, yeah, on average, um, it's about fifty dollars to hundred dollars per link. Cool, so cool. that's on average. But then again, that's for international keywords, lah. This keyword is so easy to rank. I think with proper on-page, you know, you should be able to fight him already. Mm. Yeah, it's not that difficult. Yeah, I'm talking about international keyword because how many SEO people in Malaysia? Yeah, I think less than hundred. So to rank on the first page of Google is quite easy in Malaysia, which is good. Yeah, blue ocean. All right, uh, Lin, you need to tell me what you want to do with the hands baby food. No, I actually uh I went and searched again. The top on the list is actually a baby shop that's online. So I think I'll have the same problem as Cher because I heard she sells the pillow, and those that list at the top is a furniture shop. So for mine is I uh search baby food and the one on top is the one that sells like all kinds of baby products. So okay. how is so also, you, yeah how are you trying to uh, using this tool? Keywords, huh? Yeah, using this tool. Yeah. Uh, under Keyword Explorer, this is for you, yeah? Uh, I'll just type it in and then uh, when I, uh, too, too little. But if let's say I took baby food, yeah? Let's say I change this to Malaysia, yeah? Let me just change this to Malaysia. Uh, okay, so if baby food in Malaysia, when I scroll down a little bit, uh, these are the keywords that people are using in Malaysia. Baby food, baby food processor, hence baby food. You're right. Six months baby food, baby food recipe. So all I need to do is just download this and I give my SEO guy and say, hey, I want to run for this keyword. That's it. You don't have to think. It's a five minutes job I just did. Put in a keyword, get all the keyword, get all the volume. As long as it's a keyword that is a, a buying keyword, that means uh, the intent is to buy. Yeah, you use it. Like recipe is not a buying keyword, you understand? Because they want to make on their own. So that's not a buying keyword. So uh, this software tells you everything. Yeah, and uh, you just need to download and then choose, you know, um, eight month baby food, six month baby food. Yeah, they will know what to do, lah, and they will advise you correctly. Yeah, okay. All right. yeah so it's a good tool. Yeah, Ahref. Okay, uh, Michelle, are you still here from agency? Oh, I already answered that. Onka, is it better that Google Trend in terms of keywords? Is this better? Uh, trend, it is to see whether it's going up or going down or in the middle. This is to find keyword that is profitable. So, you definitely are two different things. So it's like asking me, is TikTok or Facebook better? It's not like that, yeah? It's a different tool for different people, yeah? So, yeah. Uh, please help me check my keywords on lorry tires. Sure. Uh, lorry tires, okay. How do you spell tires? T-Y-R-E-S, yeah? Uh, again. 
just get this tool, seven dollars. After that, you can cancel it. But it's amazingly powerful. So now, when you talk to people, uh, you can yeah. So instead of lorry tires, there's only three comes out. Lorry ten tires. Does it make sense to you? I don't know what is what is lorry ten tires. Is lorry got ten tires? Is it? But this is how people search yeah. Which has no. I mean, this is how people search. This is one technique you can use, or you can go to Site Explorer. Uh, and Google, just Google uh, lorry tires and see who comes out first. And then you reverse engineer uh, them young. Okay, so let's say Michelin. All right, so I, I assume, I believe that Michelin is your second market. So I'll take this link and uh, put it inside a site explorer. Okay. Mm, no, so uh, Michelin, Michelin, fifteen thirty, mm, still okay. As long as it's below thirty, should be easy to rank. Not that difficult, yeah. Um, yeah, most Malaysian websites are not SEO focused. The only uh, in many many years, the only yesterday I saw one was like amazingly good. But if other industry, except for digital marketing, uh, I think the industries are all way behind SEO, which is good. It's a blue ocean. Yeah? So to answer you, your, this is your keyword, yeah? Michelin Malaysia promotion, Michelin tire price, Michelin tire, Volvo trucks, Malaysia, Malaysia truck, truck lorry. That's it. Not that good, yeah? Not really optimized, I would say. Yeah? Uh... Did you I saw this of keyword with stars to stars, 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 stars. What stars? Oh, um, my keyword is it? It's called keyword everywhere. Uh, this this software is called keyword everywhere. It's in my notes. Yeah, uh, you should get it from uh, Salman already. Correct. Uh, I believe when I type in something, I use uh, keyword everywhere. This, this is the one you're talking right. Is this the one you're talking about? Yeah, it's called Keyword Everywhere. Yeah, it was in my last training. So pay for it, $10, you get all this data. You don't have to pay expensive software. Yeah, this is good enough. Yeah, Continental Tire, yeah, Young, this for you. Yeah, you just use this software and you can get all these things. If for those who forgot what software is it, uh, let me just type it for you again, yeah. It's called Keyword Everywhere for Chrome. Right. So now you go back to the SEO agency, they give you nonsense keywords, say, no, I want these keywords because this can rank on Google and got traffic. Yeah, you don't give me your funny keywords. They get scared of you now. All right. Um, Young, but those are big brands. How to bring new brand? Yeah, use without a brand. Uh, four by four tires, lorry tire price, best tire for SOE. So just remove the brand and find the one that has no brand. Yeah. Uh, young, yeah. One car, this one for Google. Yeah, it's only for Google. It's only for your website. It's SEO. Yeah. It only works on Google. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? Let me see. Uh, link, a large part of my next digital marketing activity is to write articles blog. Okay. I have lots of food, baby food articles ready to go out. Okay. But I've been told that perhaps I shouldn't share a certain because, because people, baby food will not buy. What are your thoughts? Um, I think you need to show that you're an expert in that field. And by showing an expert, people will know that they can buy from you, they can trust you. Yeah. And the only way, the only way that you can show an expert is not saying that I'm an expert. I have awards, I've been featured in newspaper. That works 10 years ago of marketing. Today, if you want to know to be an expert, you need to share content. And when people share your content, people decide, oh, this fellow is talking cock, or this fellow really know what he's doing. And when people know that you're an expert, good. You already be perceived as an expert, KOL, KOC, whatever term you want to call yourself. That is authority. Now, second thing, do really people have the time 
to go and take the recipe and then cook for the baby? I'm sure they are. But I can guarantee you also there are people who have no time on. So the people who have no time, they rather buy from you because they know now you're an expert. So again, you need to understand, you don't listen to one side of people. You need to understand everything. So it makes the decision easier. Of course, it's like you go to a restaurant, a Korean restaurant, right? Now restaurants, they share the recipe. Even KFC share the secret recipe that they have. I don't know how many herbs, 12 herbs. But now it's on the internet. Even Air Moss cookies, they share the recipe. Do you know that? But do you have the time to go and bake Air Moss cookies? Do you have the time to go and make a KFC? If you have the time, okay lah. If you don't have the time, go and buy lah. So to me, mm, the more you share, you will never get wrong. Now I'm sharing this. So you say, oh, some of you, Charles, you share all your technique. What should people learn from you? Makes sense. Maybe I can teach them more. Maybe they want a mentor. Maybe, you know, uh, but some people say, hey, thanks, I'm going to research. Yeah, you can research. I give you the tools already. You just have to research more on your own. You can also. So it doesn't matter what. There's so big market in the world, guys. Don't worry, yeah? All right. Um, any other question? Uh, mattress industry, baby, uh, pillow industry, baby industry, clothes can be hard a bit. Yeah, clothes can be hard a bit because Lazada, Shopee are dominant this. But other than that, uh, all the industries are good keyword. You know why I know it's a good keyword? Because it's advertisers. As long as advertiser, I know it's going to, be, going to be profitable. Because nobody will pay for ads if the keyword is not profitable. Nobody. Yeah? So nobody. So, yeah. Soaps. Um, I think soaps are not many people use Google in Malaysia. So you probably will use Facebook better, German. Yeah. Uh, soap is something that unless unless you're a soap supplier or manufacturer, that's a different ball game. Then you put soap supply manufacturer, a soap supplier or soap manufacturer in Malaysia, can. Yeah. Uh, full in uh, my keyword full medical checkup. Sure. Maybe you give me a competitor is easier. Because Sometimes, you know, we, we think the keyword is hard, but if you give me a competitor, it's so easy. Maybe I will just, yeah, life care or oh, thanks. Because then you don't have to do the guesswork because other people have done the guesswork. We just have to follow what keyword is good, what keyword is not good, they're ranking for, yeah? Uh, all right, so. Click the website, yeah. Put it in, yeah. I'll put this in, yeah. Hold on, yeah, very fast, yeah. It's gonna come out. Hey, you all need to give me more, uh, more uh, in depth, yeah. You all, because I'm not a consultant like that, yeah. I cannot tell you which is better, yeah. Uh, but if you give me because you know how I do things, I study. So, do you see people? I mean, for 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 Tejavan, eh? uh, Do you see people? Uh, okay, give you an example, eh? So, by antibacterial, do you see people running ads? Uh, here, none. You don't. So this is a different ad. This is a shopping ad, yeah. Uh, but other than that, do you see people? No, it's wiki. Yeah? It's, it's Howard. That means nobody is doing it. So two things. If nobody is doing it, either you're in a very blue ocean or because it doesn't work. You must understand this. Yeah? So that's why I said certain keywords, I can tell you up front that it doesn't work. Uh, but certain things I need to know. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me go back to this. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the keyword. Live Care Diagnostic Medical Center. So... Uh, this is good. This has got 1,004 searches a month. Ooh, that's a lot. Medical checkup, 3,000. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Live Care Bangsa, Live Care Medical Center, Medical Checkup Price, Full Medical Checkup Price Malaysia, 
uh, full medical checkup price Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, I'll just put this for you so you can take a print screen and then, um, you know, research your own. There's a lot, yeah? You can use this. So that's quite cool. Well, it's making a killing. All oh, rank number one. Really, very good, yeah? Probably I guess your SEO guy. Yeah, definitely an SEO guy. All right. Allergy test, life care, bangsa, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't know it's bangsa. Medical center, yeah, a lot of things. All right. Um, country hide health sanctuary as well. You want me to do that for you one more time? Sure. No, I can't do for everybody, right? So you'll get a point. Just you know, buy this software. It's quite cheap, and you get priceless data for seven bucks. You know, you you get priceless data for seven bucks. Uh, diseases in Malaysia, common disease in Malaysia, uh, disease in Malaysia, top disease in Malaysia, most common disease in Malaysia. It's amazing. Why do you get target this keyword? Yeah, so these are the keywords. Uh, how about the favorite keywords related to pet food? If you want keyword, use keyword everywhere too, which is here. Yeah, I already shared with you. So this is good enough. Yeah, you can just buy ten dollars. Yeah, keyword everywhere too. You get all the keywords. It's good enough. Yeah, and Google. Google is the best. Yeah. So let's say pet food. I have nobody. Nobody search for pet food, lah. Huh? If I have a cat, I will search for cat food. If I have a dog, I will search for dog food. Nobody will search for pet food. You need to understand the concept, yeah? So why I know this? Because my wife buys all the time, yeah? She spends more money on her cat rather than myself. Do you know that? I'm the husband. I want to eat. She said, no. But her cats, oh, buy everything for the cat, yeah? Oh, she's beside me. <laughs> all right. So cat food, yeah, you can see all comes out. These, these are the things, yeah? You already got data here. So... Does it make sense? Yeah, Taylor? Uh, or Luis? Luis, I think that's, that's your, that's your name, right? All right. Uh, and of course, it's good enough, but uh, if you use another software, you get hidden keywords. Yeah, that, that's the only difference. Uh, eat cat food for tonight? Uh, no, la, not that bad. La. I only say about her because she's beside me. Yeah, if not, I won't talk about her so like that. Uh, what keyword that like this? Huh? She has a brand. She actually she doesn't even search like that, yeah, because she knows the brand already. Let me ask, yeah, what brand? What do you type? What brand you have cat eat? Okay, she 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 uses Happy Cat, yeah, uh, Happy Cat, uh, food, Happy, yeah, Happy Cat. So. Yeah, probably she used this keyword here. Yeah. Uh, she used this keyword, lah, the, the main keyword, and then, yeah, happy cat brand, lah, yeah. All right. So, let me just summarize this here, guys. It's one to know, if you're interested in this, you just want to know about keyword research, but it's another thing to know about competition analysis, yeah? Uh, most of the time, I would say Malaysian keywords on general is easy to beat, except for digital keywords, lah, because that industry uh, is mine, yeah? Over, over the last five years, I've been doing this business, right? I, I used to rank like crazy digital marketing in Malaysia, yeah? I used to rank SEO training Malaysia, I used to rank, yeah? All these main keywords I used to rank because there's not much competition, yeah? And it's, it's a very competitive keyword because everybody is looking for digital marketers. To me, uh, how do I say this? Uh, if you want to engage somebody, make sure the first thing they can rank for their website first. Or at least show you that they can rank for other people. Because no point, you know, they cannot rank you know, for other people. So people like Nevan Pillai, uh, this guy just came out about one, two years ago. Very aggressive, very good guy. Um, uh, Salt is a directory, it's an international one. Uh, Clash also is an international one. So the, the, for digital business, very competitive now. A lot of marketers are coming up, yeah? Uh, Silver Mouse, yeah? Uh, Empirical, Shop, Prima, Gapture, iMarketing, yeah? So all these, uh, how do I say it? Uh, people that is already doing it, yeah? So 
to me, if I want to engage an agency, I will use this. Yeah. If I want training, obviously, I will type in training. Lah, yeah. I mean, we need to show off. Lah, yeah. But my point is this. You want to engage somebody to do for you. There's a lot, right? And I'm going to be very upfront with you. If you can afford it, get someone to be here. Yeah. Or get someone who's already here. Then tell me, Charles, what if people who are just setting up? Uh, do you not give them a chance as a startup? I do, but you need to understand. Uh, am I going to burn my money or are you really going to help me? So I'm a believer of giving people a chance on. Don't get me wrong, yeah? Uh, because I also started a business from nobody, zero. Yeah, I don't have a, a father or a mother or uh, a, you know, a business person who just gave me the business. Nah, you are startups, you understand? Uh, my point is this. You need to balance, but be careful who you listen to. That's what I'm saying. Because everybody now can just YouTube and then they read a course and then they claim themselves an expert. That is cheating both sides. You understand? They are cheating you and they, you're going to burn your money. But how you know is by talking to them. Yeah, uh, Learn some things. Uh, ask them some SEO things like, you know, uh, and protect yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Huh? Uh, and also remember that uh, they are not going to guarantee you sales. You, they are going to guarantee you leads. Nobody can guarantee you sales, yeah? Because at the end of the day, if you outsource, uh, you must say that, hey, if this good leads, then it's okay. For example, like me, if we qualify all my criteria, let's say I got three criteria, it qualifies, good. Yeah, for example, I want 40 years old, yeah? Uh, and I want their own a business, yeah? And uh, I want a, a business somewhere in uh, Bangsa, for example. That's okay. You cannot even say, I want business who make a million dollar. Uh, that's my need. You know, like, come on. They are not gods. Yeah? We are not gods. We cannot target people like that exactly. You, sometimes you need to set your expectations also. Because Facebook is Facebook. Google is Google. They are not robots. They are not, I mean, they are robots. They are not God that can guarantee you that you can get those kind of things. So you need to set expectations because I get all the time, you know, people asking me, if I invest in yourself, uh, in, your, in you, can you guarantee me sales? I say, sure. Why don't you invest in your... Supplier, you buy supply stock, isn't it? Why do you ask me can you guarantee me sales or not? You got warehouse, isn't it? You got warehouse, right? Why do you ask a warehouse? I store my warehouse there, can you guarantee me sales or not? Uh, I mean, you need to understand, uh, I'm being very sarcastic, but you need to understand the expectations. I can guarantee you quality leads. Marketers can guarantee you that a good marketer can, but will it be, you know, you need to know the ratio then. So if the ratio is one to three percent, then for every 100, you should get at least one to three good quality sales, not leads, sales, because uh, there's conversion already. So on average, you should get about 10 to 20% uh, for every 100 uh, leads, or maybe one more, 30%, 40%, yeah? But the conversion, so as long as you know all these three things, now you can scale up your budget to anything, or SEO, either web, either you outsource for Facebook, Google, or SEO. So I hope I add value to you because at the end of the day, you need to set expectations so well so that you don't get disappointed. And anybody that says that I can guarantee you ranking on the first two pages, sure. But do you want ranking? Yeah, you want ranking? I can show you ranking, you know. Nah, come, I'll show you this. Most handsome man in Malaysia. You know who's the most handsome man? I think she knows. Lah, huh? But the rest of you, you probably will not know. Miss Fatah Amin, yeah? Who is Fatah Amin, yeah? And then you have Charles Gregory here. So what? I rank my first page. Do I get sales? Do I get people calling me for modeling? Do people call me for influencer? No. Yeah, so end of day, it's conversion that you want, not leads that is useless. You understand? So be careful of marketers because as a, in my industry, I have to protect my industry very well. Same like in any other industry, there are good people, there are not so good people. I'm not saying anyone, but I'm just telling you, there are good people, not so good people. You, know, you need to understand the expectations. Yeah. Um, so no point ranking on the first page. So what? No point. But you know what? If other people can reverse engineer and they are making good, like the software that just introduced you, and you can rank for those keywords, good. That's good enough. That's good enough already. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? I mean, repeat the stats. Okay. Uh, general, yeah. One to three percent conversion. That means for every 100 uh, leads, inquiries, clicks, you should get 
one to three sales. That is quite common. Yeah, that is quite common. The leads were based on 10%, 20%, 30% based on your, uh, this one. So if you see, uh, you see, uh, let me show you my, again, uh, my CZ glove. Uh, product for you, uh, service low problem. Uh. Service will make money one because anyone that do service should invest in ads. Yeah, because if you get a good agency, or uh, even a mediocre agency, you will get money one because the, the, the profit margin is so high, service. But let's talk about this, correct or not? Let's talk about this so that you understand. This one, I only make, my profit money is ten dollars maximum I can spend. So this one I cannot do, cannot do the technical one to three percent. It's impossible, yeah, because uh, one click is already one dollar, yeah, fifty cents, twenty cents, thirty cents. How can I get one hundred clicks? Let's say times fifty cents is fifty dollars. Crazy, right? It doesn't make sense at all. I will not make money, but I will do video ads. You know why? Because video ads for every hundred, yeah, video ads is very cheap. So video ads. Can be five cents, ten cents, twenty cents. So even one hundred clicks, twenty cents. Yeah, you said that. One hundred clicks times twenty cents. I only pay twenty dollars. You understand? But if I get only one or two sales, I still break even. You understand? I still break even. But but listen to me. Now I can remarket to another hundred people who already clicked my ads. So it's a different ball game. Yeah? It's a little bit advanced. But now I can remarket to these people. So now I can follow up with these people. So now my conversion rate will be higher, my price will be lower. Because the more uh, you want to educate Facebook, the more money you need to pay. But once you know your customer, the less money you pay Facebook. And Google works the same thing. So you need to learn uh, at least remarketing and at least at least um, look alike audience. Yeah. So technically, you cannot run just ads like that. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't work that much. All right. So if you want to engage a uh, uh, Facebook, just ask you, uh, how do you plan to remarket or how do you plan to get me a lookalike audience? Now, by asking these kind of things, you can gauge the answer already. You don't have to talk about one, you don't know how to do one. Yeah. Um, all right. We do ads. Okay, let me one more one. Nakin, Christina. Sorry, just interrupted by my colleague. Can you repeat the ads again? Uh, on normal average industry, one to three percent conversion rate. That means sales, yeah, sales. One to three percent is quite standard. So for a service industry, of course, lah, I make money. You know why? You know, let's say one click is uh, let's say one click is um, two ringgit. So hundred clicks, I already pay two hundred ringgit. Yeah. So I get one sales, I make money already. Yeah. Even though the click is three ringgit. Uh, I pay 300 ringgit. One click, I get sales. If they click five ringgit, sometimes they're finding it, 100 sales, I, 100 leads, I get one. I also make money. So, service industry is quite profitable if you use ads, yeah? So, you must know this, yeah? Because service industry, you make a lot more money. But service industry, we also got a problem. Uh, time. How many people can you serve? Correct or not? Correct or not? So, that's where the limitation. That's why I like to do both. One is for product. That can scale up. What is for service industry? I get money to scale up. So I do both. Yeah. Uh, okay. What how video ads is effective? Um, up to you. Testimonials is good. Um, promo video is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what I like to do is I like to use software. So let me introduce the software before I end. Yeah. I see about 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I use this software. Uh, let me just think. Same thing like um, Ad Spy. This now, uh, I use this software. Uh, Facebook. Hold on. Yeah. Let me get the the right software that I use. I reverse engineer how people do, and I just copy the ah Power Ad Spy. This the one. Uh, the good thing is you can try, you can test for one, two weeks, I'm not mistaken. I use this, yeah, uh, to reverse engineer what people are using. So I see the pattern. So to answer you, I don't know, but I like to see pattern. So if they do a video ad like that, I do a video ad like that. If they do like that, I do like that. If they do testable, I do testimonial. I just follow what people do. Remember, I'm a lazy marketer. 
lazy marketer don't do a lot of research. <coughs> we just model after people. What works, what don't work, we just follow. We don't uh, think that much, yeah? Okay, uh, I'll give you this link now. Okay, so. But when you copy people, make sure you know how to copy, lah, yeah? Make sure you know what to copy, lah, yeah? That's important. Not just copy blindly also. Okay, I'll give you this link here. Alan, before selling website to Flipper, is it a must to trademark the brand? No. Uh, before you sell to Flipper, you need to have at least one year case study, meaning every month you're making some money and it's progressive going up. Uh, you don't need to trademark because the moment they buy, you just transfer the domain to them, transfer the website to them, and they'll pay you cash. Flipper will take about, if not mistaken, 5%. Uh, don't quote me on that because it's been a while since I've sold, but I believe they take about 5%. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. The market rate is getting better now because it's getting more competitive. So if you're making on average, uh, let's say $100, $100, blah, $100 per month, you can sell it for about 3000 USD. If you're making about 1000 a month, you can probably sell it for 20 to 30,000 USD. If you're making 10,000 a month, you can probably sell it for 100 to 12,000 USD. I've seen people who have uh, making 5,000, 50,000 a month, they sold it for two to 3 million USD. Craziness, yeah. So it's a very good idea to 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 invest in uh, uh, building a site that people wants to buy. Yeah, uh, I do that all the time. Yeah, but I don't do so big, lah. I do small, small, like one, two thousand, three thousand. Uh, yeah. So you imagine, uh, you have so many websites, and end of the day, you flip, then you make more, then you buy again, then you flip, then you make more. So that's what I do. Yeah. All right. 15 to 20, um, yeah, 15 to 30 actually. Depends on your website. If it's a Shopify, uh, it's around 10 evaluation. If it's uh, ads, yeah, ads, uh, Google ads, uh, AdSense, uh, it can be up to 20, 30, even 40 times valuation. 20 to 40 is quite average for ads. For Shopify, it is about 10 times simply because Shopify, you run ads. Ads, you don't have to run ads anymore. Google ads, I mean, Google SEO. You don't have to run ads. If you are ranking, the valuation is so much higher. All right. Any more question? Um, no, I'm going. I, I don't do this yeah, all the time. Yeah, but um, I will just do this once with you. Every year, I do about four SEO class, and these are the classes that I teach people how to make money on SEO. Yeah, it's about two, three thousand. I don't remember. Um, my wife actually does all the sales for me, and I usually get word of mouth marketing. Yeah, um, and I, my group is small. Yeah, and I add value to at least one year support. So you will see results. You'll see training. Now I'm not gonna hard sell you or anything, but if you're interested in that class, um, I'll give my my wife my wife um, email. Yeah, not. Let her, let her do the sales, yeah. let, her, let her do the follow-up. I'll give that. If you're interested in uh, building websites and uh, making money from SEO, uh, just contact her and uh, she will give you the details. Again, make sure before you sign up, it's something that you want to do. I'll tell you exactly uh, what is it all about, whether it's suit for you or not. Because end of the day, you must understand, yeah. Um, I do make money from training, I do. But I make more money from building my own websites. So technically, I, whether I get people to my students or not, I don't really care. So you can see that I, when I train you, I train everything. I don't hide things from because to me, yeah, the competition is so big in the world. Yeah? And uh, for those who know me, uh, this is what I do for the last 10, 10, 12 years. So I don't actually promote myself that much. Um, very weird, right? But if I want to promote, I'll just say that there's an opening. If you're interested, you come. Yeah? Um, email her. Yeah, and she'll give you all the details. That is in March. I believe it's March. The next class is March. All right. Any other things that you need help? Let me know. You still got... Oh, finish already time. Yeah? Um, if, let's say, you still want to have questions for me, let me see how I can help you. Huh? I don't use LinkedIn that much. I use Facebook, but my Facebook is full. Um... 
if, if you need my help, like I said, if you just want to talk to me or anything, um, why don't you do this? Yeah? You talk to Salman, you know, open up a WhatsApp group and I'll join in. Is it okay? And uh, if you need anything, ask in the group because I don't want to, uh, it to be fair to me. I, I don't want you to come to me, ask me one by one, you know, like a personal consultation. I don't think it's fair for me, right? But if you see the group wise, anyone can learn. I don't mind adding that value to you. So, um, Afni, can you do that? Boleh tak? Suruh Salman buka satu group untuk Facebook. Siapa-siapa yang nak masuk. Eh, hey, bukan Facebook. Uh, for for WhatsApp group. And then uh, invite them in and then invite me in. And then we can just communicate. Yeah? If they have more things. All right. All right. I'll, I'll inform to Salman. Yes. I don't know whether it can be done or not. But uh, ask Salman. Yeah? Okay. Ask Salman. All right. All right. That's it for me. Thank you. All right. So... Hmm. That's the end of Jelajah uh, Usahawan Digital Selangor Certainty Beauty Series And I want to uh, thanks to everyone for joining uh, the session today And uh, thanks again to uh, Charles for the sharing and answer all the questions today uh, I hope that all the ans answers can be benefit to all of us So uh, thanks again and Happy, happy holiday. Stay safe yes. and healthy. All right. See you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye everyone. Thank you for being a great crowd. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, Charles. Bye bye.